Today's youth are tomorrow's global leaders. Here at the PMI Educational Foundation, we envision a future focused on youth and the nonprofits that serve them as they work toward building life skills through project management. By focusing on partnerships with nonprofit organizations around the world, PMIEF prepares youth for education, career, and community engagement by enhancing the development of their critical life skills. Eu aprendi a ser liderado e também a ser líder. It will help me to speak loud and proud and loud and confident. And I think that really helped me and my peers. Nonprofits all over the world understand the value of teaching life competencies to youth. That's why PMIEF is focusing on youth targeted nonprofits around the globe. By embedding engaging project management concepts into these organizations, we help give the world's youth the competencies to be inspired, successful adults through valuable life skills. With the PMIEF grant, I'm certain and very excited that it will really help us to um, further this mission to improve um, the lives of children to help children not just to survive in this world, but to thrive, um, not only in South Africa and the continent, but really to have an impact on the entire, entire world. When we teach the world's youth to apply project management skills in their lives, we unlock their potential and open doors to collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, and communication. These skills will be critical for youth around the globe to succeed in an increasingly competitive world. You are a critical part of our strategy. Your skills, enthusiasm, and financial support can help make our vision a reality. At PMIEF, we believe in project management for social good.
In just a few years, Africa will have the largest workforce in the world. How we prepare our youth today for the 21st century workforce will determine the future of entire economies, not just in Africa, but beyond. Day Africa's relationship with City started as far back as 1999, and City has been an incredible supporter of JA's work in Africa. City has a program called Pathway to Progress, which is really about youth employment, youth uh, economic opportunity, and youth skills enhancement. And that's, of course, very much aligned with everything that JA is about. Pathways to Progress is a commitment by City Foundation to impact the lives of young people in cities around the world by 2020. It is City and the City Foundation's response to the persistent issue of youth unemployment globally. Pathways to Progress initiative supports programs that help young people ages 16 to 24, helps them build an entrepreneurial mindset, acquire leadership, financial and workplace skills, and begin to engage in the formal economy through a first job. Since the Company of the Year competition is Junior Achievement Africa's annual celebration of youth entrepreneurship, and this year marks the 10th anniversary. We bring together students from different countries where Junior Achievement works in Sub-Saharan Africa. Most of these students have traveled for the first time out of their countries, and this has given them a new experience away from home. I'm Shekwaba from Swaziland and uh, my experience in Ghana it has been very nice. Although it's hot, but it's very nice. We are so grateful to our sponsors, the chaperones, and to all the volunteers for making this happen. In the last decade, we have seen a team of students from across Africa showcase great motives about the company they started, from the product they have developed to the business plans and defending their decision in front of a panel of judges. We use also our, our artwork to make jewelry and bracelets and bags. We also use car tire to make all these products. Dairy World is a company based in Uganda and it deals in notebooks. It makes you the portable notebook that you'd like to carry, affordable and durable notebook. They have demonstrated the business skills they have learned. Finance, marketing, leadership, planning and communication. All to become successful in the competition. I'm always impressed when I come to these competitions to hear the great ideas and the great plans and the great work that the students have put into uh, establishing their companies. I was blown away with the quality of businesses and ideas that um, were exhibited and the strength of the presentations. I mean, for those of us who are in, you know, business world, it doesn't get any better. It's a real testimony that Africa, we have talent. When I look at the performance from these young people, what they have done, I, I feel elated that with the guardians and support, we can transform Africa. When they were presenting to the judges and when they had to really sell their product, it was fantastic. Whether win or lose, the program has rewarded the students with more than they expected. JA has given me control over my future so much that as I'm standing here right now, I can literally picture what I would be in the future and the steps I would take to reach there. We are being taught about entrepreneurship, right? We are living in an Africa whereby there is high rate of unemployment. And by participating in JA, we are being taught to create jobs, jobs for each and every individual. We are not being taught to be employed but to employ other people, starting up our own businesses. That is a wonderful thing. Also had the opportunity to learn from other teams and learn from positives displayed by them and try to implement these positives in our own endeavors. This is the perfect platform to teach yourself how to be a young entrepreneur so that in the future, you will be actually creating employment and actually solving a big problem in the world. I'm a G alumni, class of 2014. I was the CEO and founder of Shasha Network, which is the company that I'm still working on now. My experience with JA Company program has been fulfilling. I've been able to grow and develop as an entrepreneur. But most importantly, I've walked out of that program with the clarity in terms of my purpose and what value I want to be able to produce through my business endeavors as an entrepreneur. 
If I am to describe my company by experience, I would say it was very transformative in nature and I would also say that uh, it's something that did not leave me the same. Uh, my life really changed after participating in the JA company program. I was able to go to school to a, in a different country. I, I gained a better outlook on things and, and that's all because of the, of the company program. In 2015, I had this amazing opportunity to represent Mauritius in Gabon, Africa for the mini company program. The people there were very welcoming and I have witnessed the level of competition there which confirms everything they say about the youth of Africa. They are leaders, they are change makers and they are achievers. I am so excited about JA Africa's 10th anniversary for the Company of the Year program. I remember the time that I was part of the company's program myself. It taught me how the process of building a company was more important than the destination because it builds one's character. I also got the privilege of becoming financially work at a very young age and that is something that I still use up to today. So thank you so much JA Africa for such an opportunity. The Company of the Year competition will continue to elevate and edify force in the world. How we prepare our bond. JA Africa's relationship with City started as far back as 1999 and City has been an incredible supporter of JA's work in Africa. City has a program called Pathway to Progress, which is really about youth employment, youth uh, economic opportunity, and youth skills enhancement. And that's, of course, very much aligned with everything that JA is about. Pathways to Progress is a commitment by City Foundation to impact the lives of young people in cities around the world. It is City and the City Foundation's response to the persistent issue of youth unemployment globally. Pathways to Progress initiative supports programs that help young people ages 16 to 24, helps them build an entrepreneurial mindset, acquire leadership, financial and workplace skills, and begin to engage in the formal economy through a first job. Since the beginning of our engagement with City, we've been reaching about 4,000 students per year uh, through the company program in its time, and we've also created over 800 different enterprises. It's a very important relationship for us, but it's not just important because of the source of funding and the size of funding, which is of course very useful for us as a nonprofit organization. It's important because it's a match where we are aligned in what we're trying to do in the world. The city backs up that support with, by providing uh, the time of its staff to be able to enhance JA's program. The benefits go both ways. Uh, city employees really do enjoy working alongside young people, testing new ideas and developing innovative solutions and products. Our volunteering with JA Africa provides an important opportunity for young people to meet and learn from city employees and gain valuable insight from a global bank into how to prepare themselves for productive life in their respective economies. Youth economic empowerment in Africa is a critical and it's one of the most important callings uh, that we have to address for the future of this continent. It's very important that we equip young people with entrepreneurship education because we have to change the narrative of education to respond to the changing reality. The truth is, not every child who's graduating from school now will go into a ready job that's available. The jobs just aren't there. And we have to give them the opportunity and the ability to create their own jobs and jobs for others. is excited to welcome you to the 10th company of the year competition each year we bring together the brightest young entrepreneurs from across Africa to compete in this contest of business skills ingenuity and innovation these students have received entrepreneurship training while in high school through Jay's flagship company program this program challenges students to solve problems in their communities through business ventures, unleashing their entrepreneurial spirit. Students experience running their own company and discover firsthand how a company functions and gain an insight into how their talents could be used to set up a business. This year, join us for another exciting virtual edition of Africa COY from March 25th to 27th, hosted by J.A. Iswatini. 
11 student teams representing Cote d'Ivoire, Eswatini, Gabon, Ghana, Kenya, Mauritius, Nigeria, South Africa, Uganda, Zambia, and Zimbabwe will battle it out for the coveted title of the Company of the Year program. Africa COI 20 promises to be exciting. We are grateful to all our sponsors, volunteers, chaperones, and the many others that have made this possible. To find out who wins this year's competition, follow us on social media using the hashtag AfricaCOY20 and join the live broadcast on our Facebook page at Junior Achievement Africa.
welcome back. It's so great to have you here with us today. Today is day two and today is competition day. So we have some really exciting stuff, some amazing pitches, and we'll be meeting our teams as well. And we'd like to thank everybody who is joining us, including our event funders, board members, of JA Africa, board members of all our member nations, CEO of JA Worldwide, executive directors, program managers, teachers, chaperones, staff, and friends of JA. Today is competition day, and we have 11 teams competing from Cote d'Ivoire, Eswatini, Gabon, Ghana, Kenya, Mauritius, Nigeria, South Africa, Uganda, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. This is how today is going to be work. Our teams will be evaluated by an esteemed panel of judges on their company reports, stage pitches, and one-minute video commercials. The company reports and video commercials have already been scored by our judging panel, and we'll be hearing the pitches of the teams shortly. But before that, let's meet our judges for this year's competition. Our finalist award judges. Head judge for the third consecutive year Camille Blair, Assistant Team Lead, Interview Logistics Team, Capital One. J.A. Alum Iyonolua Aboyeji, General Partner and Co-Founder of Future Africa, Co-Founder, Andela and Flatwave. Msebe Malenga, Registrar of Companies, Eswatini, Ministry of Commerce, Industry and Trade. Mohamed Saraya, Innovation and Strategy Expert, Transcendental Education. And Yudeshni Galetti, Associate Oliver Wyman. And here are our signature award judges. For the FedEx Global Possibilities Award, we have Pam Johnson, Communications Advisor, FedEx Global Citizenship. Larato Molechi Banda, Senior Marketing Specialist, FedEx Express. Abigail Anani, Assistant General Manager, Integrated Air Services, Ghana Limited, Licensee of Federal Express Corporation. For our City Foundation Client Focus Award, we have Ibath Analor Bikogo, VP, Chief Country Compliance Officer, Citibank, Gabon and Rogers Wamui, Trade Finance Specialist, Citibank, Zambia. Branded Award Judges. For Tomorrow Foundation Future Tech Award, we have Liban Suleiman, Chief Advisor, Tomorrow Foundation. For our PMIEF Project Management Award, we have Anayal Ndosa, Board Director, Project Management Institute Educational Foundation. And for our CEO Rising Award, we have Christy Maheri, Board Chair, Law Trust. Camille Blair, our head judge for this event, joins us to give her opening remarks. So grateful I'm coming live from uh, Maryland, United States of America. I'm looking at all these students, all this talent, this wonderful talent that we have represented from all the countries. I'm very excited about what you're gonna showcase, all your hard work and your dedication. We are so grateful that you were able to, you know, organize and, and implement your companies during this very challenging time. But what better students to display that than the students from all the countries represented here. Thank you so much for your hard work and your dedication. We look forward to learning more about you, learning more about your companies and the journey that it took to get you in this place. Thank you so much again. And as well, thank you to all the judges and the JA Africa staff for organizing everything. And a very big thank you to you, Camille, for that. Um, Camille is our head judge for this event. Um, I would love to, um, at this point, hear from the general partner and co-founder of Future Africa, also, the co-founder for Andela and Flatterwave, who is an alumnus of the JA Company program, to give us a few remarks. Let's um, welcome Iyonolua Aboyeji. You guys are definitely taking it up a notch, but, but we also have the company program. 
um, and we and we we had to participate in the same activities as you have, and um, you know doing that. Um, uh, I'll say the the JA company program really taught me skills that have stayed with me today. Um, just by way of introduction, for those of you who don't know me, I I spend a lot of my time investing in technology startups across the continent um, through a platform called the Fund for Africa's Future. Um, we we've, we've invested in quite a number of the biggest uh, companies on the continent. Um, um, and co-invested um, with, with a number of uh, uh, pretty amazing uh, global investors, including, um, including uh, um, folks like Mark Zuckerberg uh, amongst, amongst several of them. So, so I, I, you know, I guess I don't have very much to say except I'm super excited uh, about, about what you guys do after this because this is a learning process. And you're starting early, which is a huge advantage, especially given how fast the world is is, is growing. So, um, so super super excited for all of you, um, and um, and um, I wish you the best of luck um, as you present your companies to us. Uh, may the best team win. Well, thank you very much, E, and of course your daughter for making a cameo appearance in that. Um, so let's get straight into it now. This is what basically the competition is going to look like. Our teams will present in groups. Each team has five minutes to pitch and then seven minutes of Q&A with the judges. Our Francophone teams will have 12 minutes of Q&A to account for translation time. There will be a countdown clock which will start flashing in the last minute. We're going straight into the competition now and group one will start us off. They'll be pitching in this order. Mascarene, Kenya, Gabon, Zambia. This is the part where you like and you comment and you cheer on the team that you are supporting. everyone, I'm Fujati Evan. Let us first have a dip into the truth. Imagine you're in a forest, hearing the birds chirping and inhaling its earthy smell where it energizes your soul. Dreamy, right? Suddenly, man appears on the scene with his activities of destroying the forest, thereby starting to strain our ecosystem. This is our hard reality. In 2020, each company has been established to create a safer, cleaner and a purer world for the upcoming generation. Overall, our main goal is to inspire the younger generation to develop greeny hands. Therefore, to generate revenue, we have come up with the idea of designing fashionable protective face masks and mini sanitizer holder. Our fashionable face masks are comfortable, breathable, adjustable and fashion forward. It can be tightened and loosened, thereby preventing people from ending up with dumbbell ears. Now, coming to our trendy sanitizer holder, it is intended to help and make it easier for people to sanitize their hands throughout the day, where they can clip it to the bags. Sanjana, would you like to share the marketing strategies with the audience? Of course, Puja. This was the most crucial moment of our project. Based on the market research conducted, we realized that our planned product is currently fitting the market needs. As such, we were able to have a better understanding of our consumer profile by carrying an online survey. After analyzing the result, we have started to work on the pricing strategy. As you can see on the slide, we have manufactured 64 masks and 64 sanitizer holders. The unit price of the fashionable mask is $5.03 and the sanitizer holder is $1.26. Thus, it comes with a total revenue of $402.56. 
with the profit earned, that is $340.26, we were able to carry on our CSO action while sustaining the business. Indeed, Sanjana. The fund raised by the SAVES was invested in Eden College Group for our first CSO action. Our CSO goal is to save nature. As you can see nowadays, people are disconnecting from Mother Earth, and our aim is to connect them, keep them in touch with the flora. I could be the change you wish to see in the world, I say by the prominent Mahatma Gandhi. Therefore, with the help of the school management, we arranged for the planting of 20 plants, such as flowers, medical plants, aromatic plants. We also sensitize students by spreading knowledge on plants and their benefits on health and wellness. This first step was an achievement for the EG company, and now we intend to move forward and help NGOs like Green Belt Movement Kenya, Greenpeace Africa, and Reforest Now Australia. However, it did not happen without challenges. Right, Safira? Unfortunately, yes, we have faced many obstacles, but together we overcame all hurdles. Due to confinement and people remaining in their house, we had to change our strategy and advertise mostly using Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram. To raise finance, we use our own savings, seek sponsorship from our friends and parents. But as a registered social enterprise, we will benefit from more facilities. As in all organizations, we also had difficulties to plan meetings. Therefore, we at least one representative of each department was present and then we communicate the information to others later. Wow, Safira, it was a thrilling experience. Yes, you're right. From our strong wish to save the flora and through all the procedures, we implement our first CSR activity on the 27th October 2020. The path was not a smooth one, but we intend to stay committed to our goal and impact at national and international level. In the near future, we intend to be present in a maximum number of regions and innovate our project continuously to fit the market demands and remain sustainable. We also intend to plant 1.5 million of trees by 2025 and will join hands with various NGOs at a local and regional level to achieve this goal. While doing this, we will ensure to educate the younger generation about this essential goal and make planting a part of the educational curriculum at national level. Thank you so much, um, Team Macarena. That's, that was a wonderful, wonderful presentation. Um, I will open it up at this time for questions from the judges. Thank you for the pitch. Uh, that was very interesting. So uh, I, I have one question um, to the EG company. Uh, um, I know one of the products um, that they are actually um, uh, marketing is um, a face mask that they are actually making. So my question is actually, we know that face masks uh, actually um, uh, being, let's say, uh, bought or are actually uh, being sought by individual based on the fact that we have this COVID-19 pandemic. So, uh, and we're all aware that um, uh, organizations and nations are actually working in order to find vaccines so that, uh, let's say, to eradicate this pandemic. So my question to the EG company, is, I mean, uh, what is your strategy in the long term, uh, given the fact that uh, face masks is something that maybe people will just abandon in a, in a year or two, or maybe in months to come, once this pandemic will be eradicated? Is this a long term product or just, uh, let's say, um, an opportunity product given the pandemic that is actually uh, uh, happening across across the globe. So that is actually my 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 my, my first question at this stage. Thank you. This is an interesting question. Yes, I agree that uh, hopefully that we will end up with the COVID nineteen pandemic. But uh, each as we are the each company, we will continue to uh, to to fill the demand of people and we will 
us, we will design our fashionable face mask and a sanitizer holder. Because our, our main goal is to revive the world, is to, because we are a social enterprise, is to revive the world, is to reconnect the younger generation with the mother earth. So yeah, that's true that uh, in the near future, people would, would not uh, wear masks, but we will approach different, different ways of how to sustain our business. Because our goal is to, our goal is to uh, sustain the environment, sustain the business, and to, to reconnect the people to the mother earth. Good day, Mauritius. Um, my question is, uh, with the world um, supporting um, the fight against the COVID in the supply of PPEs, um, including face masks, what would you, what, if you were to improve your, 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 your product, what would that be? And uh, your product seems to be uh, specialized on a particular group, and that is ladies or women. What, what are your thoughts in further improving your products to cater for the other groups? Uh, thank you. So thank you for your question. Um, we will run ourselves on recital in order to protect the environment. I kind of had the same question as we, as has it been asked about is it just for women or were the masks were the, was there a plan to include masks for men? In the time, thank you for your question. In the time being, we are we have only launched masks for for girls, but later. We are working in this project to implement mass for the process. We are still in progress. Yes. One of my questions is when I read your business case, um, I noticed that you just focused your marketing research on girls aged between 18 and 24. And I was thinking that wasn't that limiting your, your target market? Shouldn't you approach this? Because I would use the face mask and, and I'm not, uh, I'm older than 24. So I, I just want you to understand. And who was, who are the people buying your masks? This is a very interesting question. Actually, uh, when we carried out our market research online, we realized that uh, most of the youngsters between 18 and 24 were our target market. They were interested to buy our product. That's why in our report, we have included that uh, people between 18 and 24 were more interested to buy our product, which include the creativity of our mask and the notion of the comfort. Why were we? Uh, I was curious, what is the biggest learning you had in, uh, during the sales process and marketing and how do you uh, want to use this learning in 2021? Uh, thank you for this interesting question. So to, for the sales and marketing team, we had created a platform on uh, social media we have created platforms on the social media to be able to, to connect ourselves with our, with our respondents and our customers. And the sales and marketing department, we have uh, carried out our, uh, our statement to be able to, to finalize our uh, price, our final price for our product. And we had also a distribute questionnaire to be able to, to know the, the demand the demand and to the taste and preferences of our customers. We also learn how to um, we also learn how to communicate with um, customers, um, delivery um, process, how to uh, take um, payments, and so on. Also. Thank you so much, Team Macarons. Um, we appreciate you coming, coming and sharing your product. Um, thank you, judges, for this round. Um, we appreciate it. Thank you.
mkulima mwenzangu je unapata shida ya kutafuta soko na kuza mazao yako suluhisho ni rahisi suluhisho ni mkulima digi app kupata mkulima digi app kama una smartphone enda kwa play store na download mkulima digi app na kama una kabambe bonyeza nyota moja mbili tatu alama ya reli Mkulima smart ni mkulima diji. marketing challenges. Mkulima Digi application will act as an intermediary between the farmer and the market. Thank you. Uh, my name is Said Mohammed, I'm the production manager. Um, our is to be to provide a direct link between the farmers and the markets and to be part by the service called on the On the farmer side, we'll be taking the information such as the geographical location using the GPS their contacts and their names. We'll also be tracking key matrices such as the number of registered farmers on our application. On the market side, we'll be taking information on their prices, the communities available and the location, and also the, num uh, the key matrices such as the number of registered markets uh, and the number of communities available. On our hand, as the Bulima DG also directly providing services such as advisory, prediction, projection, and uh, artificial intelligence that is integrated into our app. Well, we'll be using the advisory service to alert the farmer on the, the coming of uh, Atlantic seasons and the prediction will be to alert them on the ever-changing weather patterns in the current geographical location. We'll be also using the projection to help them plan on future plant planting seasons and we will use the AI to gather factual data on the farmer to provide a suitable, a suitable market and price uh, that is the, the way he or she can sell his or her product. Uh, I would like to thank our partners that helped us in uh, developing applications such as the Calvo for providing the database on the farmers and the markets, uh, the Kenya Meteorological Services for providing the data on the, uh, and the weather forecast on the geographical location for the farmers, and uh, the Agrofest for providing a one off uh, discount for farmers um, certain, on certain products in the application. Thank you. And as department, we are dealing with income generation and expenditure of the farm. In the regular streets, we have got app subscriptions, commissions on app purchases, app advertising spaces for services, providers and adults. And in cost structure, we have app development and maintenance, salaries and wages, marketing and administration. In income, we are charged we are going to charge the farmers uh, eight US dollars. This is frequent fee annual and the club members are 29 US dollars but in the expenditure we are we are likely we are likely going to use a large amount of money in marketing and advertisement in that we are we want to introduce our applications as advertisement in TVs and radio stations. Well, mostly in radio stations because they have uh, a wide geographical reach. Thank you. Uh, my name is Abdullah Mohammed and I'm the head of the marketing department and uh, human resource. Under the marketing department, we are focusing on creating awareness of our project through the following strategies, which is mainstream and social media, such as radio stations and uh, Facebook pages. Also, partnership with the AgroVest and lastly, working with agricultural extension officers as our brand ambassadors. Our unique value of reposition, they are as follows. We allow farmers, uh, we allow direct access to farmers, we allow farmers direct access to markets by, by, by passing the middleman. Also, we provide demand-based price advisory alerts to farmers. And finally, allows farmers to access discount selected price of inputs. When we're looking at the human resource department, um, our company consists of almost 50 members. Running this project, uh, we have faced we have faced so many challenges such as uh, such as conflict uh, in the, within the management. Also, the technical capability 
and inability to balance between the academic and the project commitment. But with the help of our patrons and our mentors, we uh, we get uh, we got to focus down on the, on the company's ambition, and we are successful in that. Right? Coming to the uh, coming to the CSR, uh, we are planning a pandemic project, which 15 farmers will be selected from the coastal region at the start, and they will be provided with a uh, hundred seedlings each to plant a, a species of tree that will be uh, will complement his or her, or her agricultural activities. I would like to appreciate the school administration, J.A. Patron, Junior Achievement Kenya, and our mentors from AIG Kenya, NCBA, Postbank, and Cal. Thank you uh, so much, Team Kenya, for your presentation. Um, I know some aspects of it were not clear uh, based on background music or audio. Uh, so the first question, um, I will open it up to one of the judges to ask the first question. I think uh, uh, both in your report and uh, presentation, I think I missed uh, the production uh, uh, process. Were you the ones who actually uh, developed the app? Um, in its uh, gateways, security certificates, and, 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 and all of that, did you actually um, create the app yourselves? Uh, I think I missed it on the report and uh, another presentation. Thank you. Um, as I was saying, uh, we we have we have developed the app ourselves, but with some help from the Kenya Agricultural and Research Institute (ICT) team. Uh, thank you, uh, Team Kenya. Uh, great job um, on developing of the app. I have okay two questions, which I, I believe they'll go together. The first is, um, how did you go about managing your project? You can just give us a very simple approach of how you did it, from the uh, initiation, planning to closing. Uh, but also, it's, your app is okay is to benefit the farmers. How much did you engage the farmers uh, on developing your product? Yes, actually, with the period that we took to come up with the application, is that uh, during the it was during the pandemic actually, and uh, when the pandem pandemic was there, we did a lot of research and uh, there were lim there was limited time since there are more restrictions about the 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 virus so approaching the farmers physically was a, was one of the challenges that we faced and uh, through that we had just we, we faced a few farmers and uh, on the research on the period that we took to come up with the with the idea with the application it took us uh, initially like uh, it took us um, some time but uh, like uh, three months to come up with the application, but uh, Carlo, which it is Kenya Agricultural Research Institute, gave us an, a database to come up with the application, which uh, we really appreciated. So the database was also presented by Carlo. We, we partnered with them to come up with the application. My question is mostly around fulfillment. So are you, are you also responsible for, for the fulfillment? And how do you verify that? Um, I understand you use satellites, but do the satellites also help you verify um, that the farmer um, is likely to have the stock that they're putting up for trade? Um, and, and if so, how, how, are you, how is that process working? And then how do you um, provide logistic solutions to fulfill trades? Okay, so as I said, we were partnering with Carlo. This is an this is Kenya Agricultural Research Institute. They have every data of farmers within our country, and uh, they have every information about the farmers. So we they are sharing their database with our application, and with this database, we can clearly get the records of the farmer, what he what he does, what kind of 
plant it grows what, what market that what where is this farm because carlo have also the um, we also have the market database where we can we get the prices of the commodities and we can easily connect the farmer from the data gave, given by us by carlo we can just connect him to the to the market easily yes thank you Yes, um, fantastic presentation. Just wanted to ask a question uh, that goes in line with some of the questions from the other judges, um, because in your company report, we didn't, I didn't see the uh, user interface or the application. Uh, would like to know if the application has gone live, um, if we have transaction tests, maybe uh, like simulated one transaction on the application to see uh, how, how it works. I understand that uh, due to the pandemic, you didn't probably get the chance to go all the way through uh, your your plan. Just that, that's my main question. If we can, if you can express to us how the application, fun the functionality is. Um, so like basically we'll be checking their, we'll be having two accounts. One they can use uh, either social media or they can use the Digi account. Um, on re after registering, and paying their subscription fee, they are they are connected. They are con they are brought into the main menu where where they can find the services that we have provided, such as the advisory, the prediction, projection, and they can also find the markets that that, that are currently providing their services. They want to buy that they that they want to buy the products. Um, they can also they can also find the services such as the 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 agrovets. So that they can buy some farm inputs for them. Right. Um, so in your Feathers Possibility Award um, one pager um, notes to us, you indicated that you rolled out your um, company to other other countries. Okay. You'd want to connect to other countries, and you indicated that you find out or you will come out with a reliable platform. I want to know if you have already identified the reliable platform. Yes, uh, we have already identified the reliable platforms, which is the so, which are the social media, Twitter, Facebook, because it's it's very many users use this application, these uh, platforms. Yes, and uh, we have already shared the prototype of the application on Facebook already. It's a, it's on Facebook, yeah. Um, thank you so much, uh, Team Kenya. Thank you for answering our questions. Thank you for your presentation. Wonderful job. At this time, we'll, judges will take some time to do some scoring. à l'instar de plusieurs pays équatoriaux, a un climat chaud et humide, où il pleut 9 mois sur 12. Aussi, lorsqu'il pleut, on se protège la tête avec un parapluie, le corps avec un infirmière. Qu'en est-il de nos chaussures qui nous sont chères C'est là qu'intervient un période avec la création d'un hôtel chaussures appelé PC21, qui est conçu à base, à base, des, à base des matériaux résistants, des, à base des à base des matériaux résistants à l'eau afin de protéger nos chaussures de la pluie et de la boue. À présent, le directeur des ressources humaines vous procédera un tableau de la vie au sein de son département. Et maintenant, il est salué mon jury. Bonjour, je suis Emmanuel Christian de Ballet, directeur des ressources humaines de la vie entreprise Aérien. Occupant ce poste, j'ai été confronté aux difficultés relatives à ma charge, notamment la gestion de l'équipe et la résolution des conflits. Aussi, face à la pandémie de coronavirus qui plonge le monde dans une crise sans précédent et face au lieu de ce sont des mesures indirectes par les gouvernements, j'ai vu initier au sein du groupe de nouvelles méthodes de travail, à savoir les visioconférences et les textos, 
pour le maintien et le bon fonctionnement de notre équipe. La mise en place de valeurs que sont la communication, l'entraide, la confiance et l'amour du travail bien fait a été un facteur important pour la bonne cause de notre équipe. Je laisse maintenant le soin à notre responsable production de vous dénumérer et les derniers de fabrication de notre produit. Bonjour à vous, chers membres du jour. Je me nomme Mademoiselle Kalmata Moustapha. En ma qualité de biologiste, ma mission n'a pas été facile. Mais, grâce à la participation effective de toute l'équipe, nous avons un nécessite de prime abord à l'achat du matériel nécessaire à la fabrication de nos produits, comme un chalumeau, un ruban adhésif et les bons marins Et aussi, au recyclage de notre matière première qui est la chambre à air chez les vulgarisateurs. Dans la deuxième étape, il est question de la transformation du produit. Cette étape est l'une des plus importantes, car elle consiste à transformer notre matière première d'une part en forme de chaussure et d'autre à la rendre flexible. Et pour cela, nous avons eu recours au chalumeau. La troisième étape est celle qui définit la fin de notre production, car elle consiste à designer le produit. Pour ce, je laisse ce soir au directeur de finances et vous éclaircir sur les aspects financiers liés à la promotion et vente de notre produit. Bonjour, chers membres du jury. En tant que directrice financière de la Mouna que vous êtes mon devoir est de gérer le domaine des finances et de la comptabilité. Ceci a été moins difficile grâce aux établissements de, de mes collègues. Dans le début de notre projet, nous avons besoin d'un capital comptable plus fort. Pour l'obtenir, nous avons eu beaucoup à mettre des actions dans six externes, ce qui nous a permis d'effectuer les ventes pour l'aboutissement de notre projet. Nous avions utilisé cinq chauffeurs à 1000 francs, un, cha un chalumeau à 5000 francs, deux bombes à 6000 francs, un rebond de à 500 francs et aussi, et aussi un millimètre de qui a été offert. Le tout faisant 12500 francs. Notre produit était fixé à 5000 francs le budget et faisait un seul bénéfice de 500 francs par produit. Pour faire connaître notre produit, nous avons utilisé une stratégie de marketing qui consiste à faire une jeu de marché en fonction des entreprises, l'administration, pour avoir la vie à la clientèle sur nos produits. Nous, nous avons utilisé comme stratégie commerciale, euh, comme, comme, comme stratégie, comme stratégie commerciale, WhatsApp Business, ainsi que Facebook, sans oublier la bonne gère méthode de bouche à l'oreille qui nous a permis de promouvoir nos produits. Je vous remercie très cher, membre du jury. C'était le groupe Imperial. So essentially, they presented a product that um, is uh, highly uh, uh, need uh, during the rainy season in uh, rain, rainfall countries. Um, their product is essentially a shoe cover because of people getting their shoes uh, wet and dirty during the rainy season. So they executed a uh, product uh, 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 a strategy, raise funds. Um, their product is uh, approximately a cost of... Uh, Uh, $12, I don't remember the exact number uh, to produce, using recycled um, tires. And uh, so they have a prototype of a product. Uh, they have the product transformation. They bought the equipment to do the transformation process, hence the final product that you see that they presented on their documents. Um, and, uh, now, and they did the market research directly um, through the uh, private sector and administ Gabonese administration to, to find out about the product market marketability. Um, and uh, I think that uh, that sums it up in a, in a, in a, in a nutshell. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so since you're gonna be our translator, Liban, I, we are appreciated since the translator is not on. So one of the questions that I have is in regards to, I saw some figures, um, Team Gabon, for your expenses. Wanted to know what was your, what's your break even? Alors bon, nous, euh, nous faisons un seuil de rentabilité à partir de la vente de cinq produits. Voilà. They break even after the sale of five products. So five uh, shoe protections. Okay, what is the cost for each? What are you selling it for? Bonjour à vous, je me nomme Mademoiselle Balmata Moustapha. En tant que directrice de production, le coût de notre protège se sur à 4500 et nous le vendons à 5000. Our sales, our cost of production is 4500 CFA, which is uh, approximately $10, and they sell it uh, for 5000 CFA, which is uh, $12. Oh no, $11. Yes. Uh, thank you, Kaban. I think I've, I have two questions. The first one being, what is the durability of the product? How long does it last in those rainy conditions? And then the second one, uh, in their share capital, 23% is held by external shareholders. And what is their understanding of external shareholders? Thank you. Okay, alors, notre produit uh, est durable 
et euh, il a une lente décomposition dans le temps. Et euh, nous avons, euh, comme il a été cité, 23% d'actionnaires externes. Donc, je vais laisser le soin à notre directrice financière de vous en parler. En effet, euh, pour, pour pouvoir réunir notre capital de départ, il nous a fallu avoir les actionnaires, actionnaires d'avoir interne, c'est-à-dire nous, les fondateurs, et aussi nous avons eu recours à quelques actionnaires externes qui nous ont permis d'effectuer des dépenses pour aboutir à notre projet. Il s'agit des membres, il s'agit des membres de nos familles respectives et de notre facilitateur. Ok. So um, for the durability question, the nature of the uh, product itself, being uh, derived from tires, has a long dur uh, durability naturally. Um, so that durability transfers onto the product, the shoe protection. Um, and uh, the second question on the capital, I had to ask them a follow-up question, so not direct translation. Um, they said that they had 23% of external funders to help them fund the development of the product and the product uh, design. Um, but at that specific uh, moment, I asked the question, who are the uh, external investors? Because that was a question. And they responded that they raised with friends and family. So each, each of them went respectively to the families to raise the funds to be able to develop the, the product and the, 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 the product. So my question is around distribution. Um, how, how are you thinking about distribution? Um, for your business, like where would people be able to access the product and, and, and why would they go to those particular places to find your product and buy it? Alors, donc pour pouvoir acheter notre produit, c'est simple, nous avons eu recours aux réseaux sociaux que beaucoup utilisent aujourd'hui pour le commerce, mais aussi nous avons la, la bonne vieille méthode bouche à oreille. Je peux en parler à quelqu'un qui peut en parler à un autre et ainsi de suite. Sans oublier que nous avons utilisé WhatsApp Business pour pouvoir promouvoir notre produit et aussi se rendre dans les établissements ou administrations encore, entre autres. So basically for their product, the first uh, element of marketing is social, social media. Um, they use the Facebook and, uh, and uh, different uh, applications. Um, specifically, they're using WhatsApp Business, which is uh, the platform through which they promote the product uh, locally. But the most important element is that they set up a word of mouth system and they working through the schools, which is their primary customer base. Um, and the administration, meaning buildings, uh, administrative buildings, um, so that uh, they can uh, uh, have that market, which is... Uh... Hi, Levan. Uh, my understanding is that the shoe or the product is supposed to be worn over your existing shoe. Uh, when I tried to like look through the report or the pictures, I just couldn't understand. Is there like a zip or is there a casing? Because it feels like it's kind of a sock and I just didn't understand how it would go over a shoe. Très bien, merci beaucoup. Alors, euh, Thank you very much. le shoe cover, c'est un modèle de chaussure voilà, que nous avons ici. Cela s'enfile comme euh, voilà, une chaussette au-dessus de votre chaussure. Voilà. Et vous pouvez voir, il y a une bande antidérapante qui vous permet de ne pas glisser ou déraper sur les surfaces et elle adhère à tout type de sol. Il n'y a pas de fermeture, voilà, il n'y a pas de fermeture et elle est élastique. Vous l'enfilez tout simplement au-dessus de votre chaussure. Merci. So he said that uh, ex ex exactly, um, as you said, it, uh, it is uh, to be able to protect your shoe from from uh, water and uh, mud and so on. And it is exactly like you said, you wear it like a sock over your shoe. Um, at the bottom, there is an anti-slippery um, band that they put um, so that they tested it on, and, and it's adaptable to all types of terrains. Um, so um, that's how it's designed, um, yes. The question I asked is, um, when you did your marketing research, was there a demand for this product or, 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 or not? Alors, d'accord. Oui, effectivement, la, notre clientèle euh, a réagi favorablement voilà, euh, à notre produit. Et comme euh, c'est un problème qui touche tout le monde, 
vous pouvez vous protéger euh, votre corps sous une pluie avec un parapluie ou avec un imperméable comme chez nous en Afrique centrale, mais nos chaussures sont toujours exposées aux dégâts liés aux intempéries, aux averses. Voilà. So the, the answer saying that effectively was uh, when they researched with their clients and potential prospective clients, they saw that there was huge demand for it because people managed to protect themselves with umbrellas, managed to protect their bodies with the uh, plastic impermeable, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, the coverall, but the shoes are subject to huge uh, uh, material uh, destruction um, and therefore people uh, positively reacted. Wonderful, wonderful. How many people did they survey? Uh, okay. Uh, dans notre tablette, ce nom déjà, c'est un 99%. Tout le monde a apprécié et tout le monde peut s'en procurer. Sans oublier que nous sommes vendus uh, dans les administrations, entreprises, pour savoir vraiment si le produit pouvait être utile pour, uh, pour, pour tous en fait. Donc, un chiffre, combien de personnes à peu près? À peu près euh, ici, euh, ici, à l'un et l'autre, d'abus. 1600 personnes. Because um, they said that they, they surveyed in their school, they had um, close to a 99% uh, people that adhered to the product. They went to other administrative buildings, to administrations, to private companies. They got the same. I asked them how many people, the number. They said in their school is of 1,600 people that they surveyed. So it's uh, not actually a question. It's a comment and suggest another suggestion. So the product, from my point of view, is very cool. Even like here in, in Europe, if someone has a rain shoes, it's really nice that you have a pair uh, uh, in the car or something if it rains unexpectedly. So it's very cool. And second, if there is a shoe store in your neighborhood or something, try to discuss with them if you can display some of the product to test also uh, the demand from uh, other target groups. Yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, Team Gabon, for an amazing presentation. I think um, some of the judges were thinking in their heads if the if the shoes come in other colors or it's just black. Voilà donc quand le client commande, il peut demander la couleur qui lui plaît, mais euh, avec les détails qui lui sont propres. Et nous le prions, nous, nous le fabriquons avec les bandes aérosol. Et ça, c'est le produit à l'étape plus. Il est encore euh, sous forme de chambre à air. Chambre à air. So they, they, they said that uh, effectively they're going to do a customized uh, order approach and they can deliver in any color with specific designs that the people request. Um, and that's what they're developing. And um, for example, this is the neutral product uh, at, the, at the, uh, the basic stage. And, uh, and people can order any color as to have anything put on it and they will deliver it to the person. Wonderful. Thank you again, uh, Bravo uh, Team Gabon. Um, at this time, the judges will take some time to do our scoring. Thank you so much again. in 250 grams packages, Pambana dry mangoes and Pambana dry pineapples. Pambana, sustaining you every day. Welcome to Pambana J A Company, a company that sustains you every day. My name is Sarah Puri, the president of this company. Imagine a world where it has fruits 
throughout the year, in season and out season. Imagine having mangoes, pineapples, peaches, even when they're not in season. Well, such a world is possible with Pambana JA Company. Pambana JA Company is a people-led enterprise of Highland Secondary School in Osaka, Zambia, which has set itself to be competitive and trade-setting company in the food processing industry. Our company's management includes all top management positions headed by the company's president, three assistant directors, and four people in production and sales team. Our vision as a company is a healthy and economically viable world through creativity and innovation. Our mission is to provide our customers with nutritious seasonal fruits throughout the year and deliver to our stakeholders. We pride ourselves in our values. Creativity, innovation, teamwork, hard work, and the spirit of excellency in production and distribution activities. Now I hand it over to the production manager. Thank you. According to the 2020 Zambia Nutrition Report, malnutrition is a major burden on the healthcare system in Zambia and also contributes to low human capital. Nationally, 40% of children under the age of 5 are stunned, and this effect continues after the adolescents and the other foods. This has been attributed to lack of nutritious food, such as fruits which provide vitamins, fiber, minerals, and proteins for the good health of the population. Therefore, the scarcity of mangoes and pineapples during the off season is a major contributor to malnutrition in under age children, teenagers, and adults alike. Pambana JA Company provides a solution to this problem by offering seasonal dry nutritious fruits, which are sold at affordable and low prices. Our products include Pambana dry mangoes and Pambana dry pineapples, which are packed in 250 gram zipped plastic containers. Our dry fruits have a rich source of vitamins, fiber, proteins, and minerals, which help in improving blood flow, digestion, and immunity. Our products are offered at suitable and affordable prices and are packed in hygienic packages. How can one use our products? Our products can be used as part of a breakfast meal or as a snack during your leisure time or as a dessert after the main meal. I'll leave it all to the marketing manager. Alright, thank you so much for that. Our market size and validation, our potential market in secondary schools, we have about 75,000. And in our supermarkets, we have about 200,000. They total accumulate to 275,000 of our potential market. Now, moving on to our business model and strategy for value creation. For us to offer and deliver our goods, it's actually uh, founded on our philosophy that it must be a solution to our customers. It must meet the expectations and needs. Being in the food industry, we understand that food must be healthy, tasty, natural, and serve to be taken. And therefore, we continue improving our network systems within and outside the school board. Not only that, uh, enhancing our relations with the suppliers of our own materials as well as our customers. And for that, we want to explore our business growth and enhancing relations and partnerships with the key stakeholders. What are our competitive advantages? Our products retain the same natural flavor and sweetness, unlike other products. It is made from natural gold products, hence, conserving the environment with you. We do not add any chemicals to our product, for that matter, your health. Is secure. Methods of payments are flexible. They can be done through mobile money and to do cash on delivery. Methods of drying are also natural. Moving on to our market adaptations, this partnership supermarket, partnership with secondary schools and primary schools and general schools, as well as online advertising and distribution of flyers. We now move on to our finance manager. Oh, thank you very much. For every company and every business, there is need for capital. And as for us, for my investment company, we have a startup capital of 10,000 points, which should be raised to the selling of shares. Apart from that, we also have agencies such as Rain for Production Sales, which will cost us 500 points of 10 months, 6,000 quarters per year. We also have Labor, which will cost us 2,000 quarters per month, 24,000 quarters per year, giving us a total fixed cost of 30,000 points. We move on to the financial projections. We have a financial projection of 2 years. In the first year, we have a total production of 50,000 units. We also have a cost of 8 quarters per unit, to which we are adding a margin of 25%, giving us a selling price of 10 quarters. So this, this gives us an annual profit of 1,000 quarters. This represents an average increase of 50% in annual production levels and increase in, and increase in profit. We also, in a situation where inflation is factored in, our company is likely to see an increase in cost of 20% and corresponds with the price increase. With this financial projection, our company is projected to, to break even in six months of operation. And for much to say, thank you for watching.
Thank you so much, Team Zambia, for that uh, enthusiastic presentation. At this time, I'll open the room for questions um, from our distinguished judges. So thanks a lot. It, uh, it's a great presentation and very, very relevant product. Uh, my question is, did you think about also using different forms of uh, packaging than plastic, something that is like recyclable or uh, people can use uh, containers. They have like coffee, uh, like uh, uh, ceramic or, or glass uh, containers. Yeah, for that, that's why we are thinking of how we can package them. Then that package is also can also be used for that. We are still thinking about it. Thank you, Tim Zambia. Uh, congratulations for the products uh, and innovation. I believe uh, the question is more into how have you planned yourself in terms of, I can see you are four of them. I'm not sure whether how many people you have behind, but on managing your production uh, or your project, how have you planned yourself and what roles have you given yourself? Uh, do you have a project manager within your team? Uh, yes, we do have a project manager. We divided ourselves uh, to, for instance, the project um, production manager, the marketing manager, and the finance manager. So when it comes to the production, making of the product, we have four people who were going to have like, to manufacture or see the same product, to prepare the same product, to fill them, to dry them and to package them. But for now, the four people haven't yet been found. So the, the, the previous work that we did, we did it the four of us. I just wanted to also, I, I was trying to find, figure out uh, on the production, uh, do you have some sort of a timeline that you have given yourself in order to uh, to produce certain number of products and how do you manage that time, making sure that you're always on time in production? Uh, yes, we have. Um, according to the mangoes, those uh, they can be dried in three hours and the pineapples can be dried. It takes for them to dry it eight hours. So we, like, we used... Um, Four stones to like dry them. So the other two we had used the the mangoes to dry the mangoes. The other two we had used to dry the pineapples. So the way we, we were working four of us. So we had like two people to handle the mangoes and two people to handle the pineapples. So we had to just take the time out immediately as we put them in the oven. My question is in regards to um, some challenges that you might have faced whether it's any members leaving the team, if there were any, um, any challenges that you faced and how you were able to overcome those challenges while you were working together as a group last year? The challenges we have faced were um, setting up the same business, raising capital and uh, electricity because of load shading in Zambia, the one we have. So it was somehow difficult but we took the chance if electricity, we had electricity at that time. So it was predictable at what time it would go and for how long it would go. So for the mammals, with, if electricity would say it's, it might go maybe at 12, would start early as eight to prepare the same products. Adding on to what you said, yeah. Can I add on? I can add on to what you said because we're in the COVID-19. So it was really difficult for us to meet, but yes, to manage here we are. Uh, thank you, Zambia. Um, you are competing with other uh, producers of, of, of the same product. And uh, my question would be for, 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 for your production to, to maximize the production, what other innovations uh, would you make uh, rather than uh, using your household uh, appliances, as mentioned in your report? Um, to answer to that question, we were planning to buy a kiln. A kiln is a machine which we use to dry fruits. 
it's a big machine and it doesn't use electricity. It's a wood. You just need to use wood. It was recently invented at the science fair. So that's what we're planning to buy so that we can dry our fruits at the large scale and we're able to produce them whether load shading or without load shading. I, I, I wanted to ask about the distribution plan. Um, when you manufacture uh, the dried fruits, like, do you have a plan to work with you know, um, to work with like stores or are you going to sell them in the school premises? What's your plan for getting your products into people's hands? Okay, so we're trying to, uh, what is our oh, partnership with supermarkets as well as with schools and we want to do online advertising. So I want to open a page up and we're able to advertise our products. And we also have a distribution of flyers. Yeah, a distribution of flyers also. Also, how have you thought about the supply of the fruits that you're getting to dry? Do you, are you going to build an algor program or do you already have farmers who will directly supply to you? How are you thinking about it? Okay, so when, uh, okay, for that, we also want to partner with the, the people who are going to uh, supply us with the raw materials. Which are the farmers. Which are the farmers, yes. Because the fruits are more naturally. So we plan to get the fruits from farmers so that we can dry them. Wonderful. Team Zambia, thank you so much. That was the time. We appreciate um, learning more about your product uh, and the innovation and also the challenges that you face. Great job. Thank you so much. Thank you very much um, to our teams for that. That was absolutely amazing. Oh my God, I'm sure when you were in high school, you were not thinking about these kinds of things. Um, but thank you once again to our teams, Mascarene, Kenya, Gabon, and Zambia. Now this is the part where you indicate in the comment section who you are rooting for, whether you're Team Mascarene, Team Kenya, Team Gabon, or Team Zambia. So we're taking a short break so that our judges can collate their results and also so that you can go into the comments section and like your teams. We'll be right back. In just a few years, Africa will have the largest workforce in the world. How we prepare our youth today for the 21st century workforce will determine the future of entire economies, not just in Africa, but beyond. GA Africa's relationship with City started as far back as 1999, and City has been an incredible supporter of JA's work in Africa. City has a program called Pathway to Progress, which is really about youth employment, youth uh, economic opportunity, and youth skills enhancement. And that's, of course, very much aligned with everything that JA is about. Pathways to Progress is a commitment by City Foundation to impact the lives of young people in cities around the world. It is City and the City Foundation's response to the persistent issue of youth unemployment globally. Pathways to Progress initiative supports programs that help young people ages 16 to 24, helps them build an entrepreneurial mindset, acquire leadership, financial and workplace skills. 
and begin to engage in the formal economy through a first job. Since the beginning of our engagement with City, we've been reaching about 4,000 students per year uh, through the company program in its time, and we've also created over 800 different enterprises. It's a very important relationship for us, but it's not just important because of the source of funding and the size of funding, which is of course very useful for us as a nonprofit organization. It's important because it's a match where we are aligned in what we're trying to do in the world. The city backs up that support with, by providing uh, the time of its staff to be able to enhance JA's program. The benefits go both ways. Uh, city employees really do enjoy working alongside young people, testing new ideas and developing innovative solutions and products. Our volunteering with JA Africa provides an important opportunity for young people to meet and learn from city employees and gain valuable insight from a global bank into how to prepare themselves for productive life in their respective economies. Youth economic empowerment in Africa is a critical and it's one of the most important callings uh, that we have to address for the future of this continent. It's very important that we equip young people with entrepreneurship education because we have to change the narrative of education to respond to the changing reality. The truth is, not every child who's graduating from school now will go into a ready job that's available. The jobs just aren't there. And we have to give them the opportunity and the ability to create their own jobs and jobs for others. Of all the numbers that matter in business, here's the one that matters most. 7.7 .7 billion. Because that's how many people there are on this planet. We believe in an inclusive, sustainable digital economy that works for everyone. So every day, we work with banks, merchants, businesses, cities and governments to solve human needs with human ideas. Every capability we build on, every investment we make, and every partnership we enter into is driven by MasterCard's mission to improve people's lives. We're helping retailers reimagine how people shop, developing new digital first payment experiences, helping independent workers thrive in the gig economy, enabling people and businesses to move money around the world, making transactions of all kinds safer and more secure, Developing new artificial intelligence solutions to detect and fight fraud. Giving people and businesses more control over their financial data. Modernizing commercial payments for businesses of all sizes all around the world. Empowering every business everywhere to drive economic equality. All in a pursuit of our vision of an economy where everyone can reach their potential. And we continue to redefine the look, the feel, and even the sound of a brand that touches the lives of billions of people every day. At MasterCard, we are here to help our partners help people. Because we believe when you start with people, you can start something priceless. Tomorrow Foundation is a Swiss charity foundation aiming at making Africa a more economically developed, politically stable and culturally confident continent. The foundation gives access to technologies, training and assistance that could result in maximum social and economic impact in Africa. From water projects to skills development, technical assistance or governance advisory, the foundation is active in the areas of education, energy, health and agriculture. Our founder, Mrs. Maggie Yu, has a long experience in international affairs and the public sector in Europe and Africa. She has always been concerned with human development. She has a professional medical degree and a Master of Communications and Public Relations, an MBA of Global Management in the United States and a Master of International Relations and Economy in Switzerland. We believe that learning-based development, empowerment, autonomy and collaboration have greater effectiveness than traditional assistance through funding or turnkey solutions. 
we consider youth education as a priority to create future leaders and a possibility of change. We developed the concept of soft barriers building, the idea that the multiplication of small-scale development projects, easy to start and addressing most urgent needs of specific communities, is the best way to fight against marginalisation and radicalisation of most vulnerable populations. The Foundation acts also at a larger scale, an upper level of the populations in need, promoting and assisting the development of more efficient and fairer economic policies and international cooperation. Tomorrow Foundation. Strive today. Strive for tomorrow. Today's youth are tomorrow's global leaders. Here at the PMI Educational Foundation, we envision a future focused on youth and the nonprofits that serve them as they work toward building life skills through project management. By focusing on partnerships with nonprofit organizations around the world, PMIEF prepares youth for education, career, and community engagement by enhancing the development of their critical life skills. Eu aprendi a ser liderado e também a ser líder. It will help me to speak loud and proud and loud and confident. And I think that really helped me and my peers. Nonprofits all over the world understand the value of teaching life competencies to youth. That's why PMIEF is focusing on youth targeted nonprofits around the globe. By embedding engaging project management concepts into these organizations, we help give the world's youth the competencies to be inspired, successful adults through valuable life skills. With the PMIEF grant, I'm certain and very excited that it will really help us to um, further this mission to improve um, the lives of children, to help children not just to survive in this world, but to thrive, um, not only in South Africa and the continent, but really to have an impact on the entire, entire world. When we teach the world's youth to apply project management skills in their lives, we unlock their potential and open doors to collaboration, critical thinking, creativity and communication. These skills will be critical for youth around the globe to succeed in an increasingly competitive world. You are a critical part of our strategy. Your skills, enthusiasm and financial support can help make our vision a reality. At PMIEF, we believe in project management for social good. Welcome back and thank you for staying with us. I hope that you've gone into our comment section and liked the teams that you're supporting. Well, we're going straight into group two and we'll be pitching in this order. Eswatini will go first, then Nigeria, Zimbabwe, and then Uganda. And remember that whilst you're watching, you can be liking as well. This is going to be some absolutely riveting stuff. Are you an individual living in a suburban area? to grow vegetables in a residential flat? Are you one of those people who want to flower and beautify their property? Well, your answer has arrived. NeighborTech PTY LTD. NeighborTech PTY LTD provides a solution in a form of a smart mobile tower garden. What this is, it is a mobile David hydroponic system which is designed to grow vegetables such as lettuce, herbs, flowers, and spinach, just to name a few. It is accompanied by liquid nutrient solution that we make out of compost 
from KG Leftovers. You, yes you sitting there on your couch, only have to plant the seedlings and add the liquid nutrient solution. The magic will happen on its own. The vegetables grow at an expeditious rate and are crispy and nutritious. The flowers go to be colorful and vibrant. With that we say, making agriculture fun, easy and enjoyable. For my inquiries, contact the numbers on your screen. The COVID-19 pandemic exposed us to two problems. Number one, the shortage of fresh vegetables in all supermarkets in the kingdom of Eswatini. Number two, a stark realization of an already existing problem. Suburban people like land to grow their own vegetables. But then, as innovators, we saw an opportunity. Then we merged agriculture and technology in coming up with a solution. Hence the birth of Smart Mobile Tower Gardens. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Before you is Bembezi Besetu, the general manager of Nagotech PTY LTD. And with me is the management team, Productions Manager, Finance Manager, and Sales and Marketing Manager. Now, Smart Mobile Tower Garden is a mobile decorative hydroponic station which has been designed to use water as a medium of growth. It is accompanied by a liquid nutrient solution that we make out of compost from kitchen leftovers. Within four months of operation, we have been able to manufacture 16 mobile tower gardens and handed them over to the sales department. To manufacture our mobile tower gardens, we use PVC pipes which are collected from building rubbles. We cut the pipes into the correct sizes, join, waterproof, check for leakages, and paint. Planting holes are then drilled into the pipes and knitting cups are cut from plastic bottles are inserted into the holes. Lastly, we insert a submersible water pump to ensure that the liquid nutrient solution circulates throughout the whole system, providing the plants with the necessary nutrients and preventing the formation of algae. To make our liquid nutrient solution, we sow kitchen leftovers in our biodigester. Then, we make an effective microorganism by isolating lactobacillus from a simple rice wash, culturing it in a rice sugar solution and inoculating it in sawdust and adding it to the biodigester. This soaks for two weeks, after which we drain the liquid and test for nutrient content. Our customer only has to plant the seedlings and add the liquid nutrient solution solution. The magic will happen on its own. Vegetables grow at an expeditious rate and are crispy and nutritious. The flowers grow to be colorful and vibrant. Our total startup capital was at $52.50. We sell each mobile tower gardens at $54.40 and a 5 liter liquid nutrient solution at $6.80. Our total sales are at $810 US dollars. This is credit to the sales and marketing team for the leadership skills displayed in order to ensure that 13 smart mobile tower gardens are sold within just four months of operation. Our profit after tax is at $4,402 US dollars 50 cents. We were able to break even after just selling one unit of smart mobile tower garden. Our return on capital employed is at 804%, which means that for every dollar invested in the business, the business was able to make $8 profits. Dividends are declared at $2.95 per share, which shareholders decided to reinvest in the business for the business to grow. With great ambulance, I can boldly say our business venture was a great success. We carried a market research to ascertain our market. We segmented our market into three segments. Firstly, property developers, who in their design can incorporate tower gardens in offices to decorate recreational centers and apartments where tenants can grow vegetables in residential flats. Secondly, malls and shopping complexes can use our design to flower and beautify their property. Thirdly, individuals living in suburban areas who lack space can use tower gardens to grow vegetables and flowers. To reach our target market, we use social media platforms, websites and podcasts to educate our our customers about our product. Our marketing strategies have proven to be successful as we've been able to acquire 13 orders in four months. Now the zeal we have for conserving and sustaining the environment is what led us to our CSR. Now on the 18th of November 2020, we donated six mango trees to Gashali Soup Kitchen, then later topped up with five more mango trees on the 5th of December because the place was eroding and there were dongas developing. Now as the green team, we believe that the soil is our greatest asset and each and every one of us should play a part in conserving it. And businesses. Problems are inevitable, but what's key is how you deal with them. Just like any other business, Nagrotech P2Y LTD suffered the effects of COVID-19 as we couldn't meet physically. To deal with that problem, our CEO ensured that we are registered with 
JAS Watini Learning Platform to continue learning on entrepreneurship and also conducted our meetings through Zoom platform. In this program, we have learned that in every problem that life brings to us, there is always a solution, a solution that can be monitored. When people went to house arrest, they could not meet. Min challenge, a silver lining in the dark cloud. FedEx Eswatini for the importation of our water submission and input sensors to accommodate commercial presentation at Hi guys, well done. Were they all sold in Eswatini or were you able to send them out to other parts of the region? So outside of or outside of land? Thank you, thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, not all of them were, 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 were sold locally. Two of our products were, were sold in South Africa. We have two customers in, in the Republic of South Africa. Well, um, first of all, congratulations. Um, very uh, smart I idea and, um, and relevant. But I wanted to ask one question on the proof of a product. So um, what type of vegetables can grow on it? I tried to find that in your company report and uh, more specs on the productivity of this uh, 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 innovation. Um, what type of vegetables and what quantities and what time uh, have you have, have you had time to experiment with that? Thank you. Thank you very much for, for such a wonderful question, Judge. Yes, uh, there is a variety of, of vegetables that can be grown in our, in our system. Uh, can I please just name a few? You can have your lettuce, your spinach, your, your, your herbs, your flowers, your, your tomatoes, your cucumbers, just green leafy vegetables and some, uh, and, and some fruit vegetables and, 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 and tubers. Uh, my production will carry on and tell you about the growing period of, 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 of some of these vegetables in the system. Over to you. Thank you so much. Um, the growing period is actually two weeks. After two weeks, each and every vegetable will be ready to pick and to be eaten because our liquid nutrient solution can only last in the system for only two weeks. And by that time, our vegetables would have been properly grown. Hi, uh, very good presentation. Um, I just have a question about how you get your product, how do you get this tower to your customers? Do you, when, if they, when they purchase a unit, do you have to send someone there to assemble it for them or is it, how, how is it packaged and how, how is it put together? Thank you, thank you, thank you for such a question. Uh, when we, 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 we send this product, since we've said that we've made a partnership with FedEx and Swati for, for for the importation and, and the transporting of our products. We send it with an instruction pamphlet to how you, 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 you use the product. Then we make a follow-up uh, in, in two days' time to if it is effective, if it's working for you, and if everything is, 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 is on point. So first, compliments on the product and presentation, really interesting. Uh, what I particularly like a lot is the fact that you develop the liquid or the solution. And uh, on one hand, this is something that is uh, great for recurring like uh, sales to the to customers who buy the original equipment or the, the device. So uh, I would encourage you to think also for additional thoughts around this line. So you are selling the... Um, so that's just a suggestion. In terms of questions, I understand that the pipes you collected from construction sites and maybe now for a, a scale up. Thank you. Thank you for such a question. Uh, I will pass you over to, to my finance manager who will tell you on the pricing of the product and how we plan to attack this question you're going to afford. Over to your finance manager. Yes. Thank you, Honorable Judge, for raising um, such a question. Now, when we, we set our profit margin in such a way that if we are not in a position of finding um, the raw materials from um, construction sites, we purchase these uh, raw materials um, from different hardware store, shops or store or sh shops. So in that position, we are still in a, in a, in a position of making profit, even if we are not in a position of finding this uh, raw materials from the from building rubbles. Yeah, yes, uh, just just one question. Um, breaking even uh, just after one sale product and, and why? 
thank you. Thank you for, for such a, a, an incredible question. It's an eye-opening question for, for us innovators. Uh, like we've said, by the upscaling of the hydroponic system, by making other designs, and by the inputting of the sensors and the, co and the coding of the mobile application through various uh, coding languages. So the reason why we are doing this is that we are trying to increase or to enlarge our target market. At the same time, penetrating, or in, or penetrating the, the agricultural market in the kingdom first, then going to the global market. Hi guys, lovely idea, yeah. really liked it. Thank uh, you. My question is, you mentioned there's a pump and I just want you to understand, does that run on electricity? Does that need to be kept on like 24 hours? No, 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 it, it doesn't need to be, oh, pardon. I, I think I will give that to, 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 to myself and marketing manager. She'll tell you on how this product uses the pump and, 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 and the benefits of using the pump. Over to yourself in marketing. Thank you so much, my CEO. Yes. For the pump, we have to plug the pump, but not for, I wouldn't say, for 24 hours, maybe twice a day just to check on it. And for the benefit of this pump is to make sure that they, it, it circulates to all the plants because if other plants don't get enough of the nutrient solution, they may not be able to grow the growth rate, which you want them to grow to. So if we have the pump, it is able to circulate to all of those plants and make the make sure that they get in su sufficient liquid nutrient solution for them to grow at the rate that you want them to grow. Thank you. And I wish you guys all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Great job, Team Eswatini. Thank you so much for a very eloquent presentation. Um, at this time, the judges will take some mom a moment to submit scoring. Thank you so much. Hey, how are you doing? How's the family? The family is looking very nice. What's the gum looking for? Uh, it's the prices of cement. It's been outrageous lately. I've been thinking about building a house for a while, but the prices of cement have been really discouraging. So I don't really know where to start from. Wait, 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 wait. Are you that old? Old. <laughs> Are you that old? You don't know what Echo Build is. Echo Build, what's that? It's a cheap alternative to building blocks. Try it. To cement building blocks. Try it. Why is your house breaking down? Why are all your walls cracking? Why are you spending more when there's a cheaper alternative? Have you heard of New Face and their Echo Build? You should try them out and save your expenses. Echo Bricks, Echo Tiles, make a big to the size. We send it down free of charge. Order larger mouse. Reducing land pollution, turning plastic waste into bricks for construction, increase recycling, less dumping all from this bill. Invest in an eco brick and save Africa. Eco bill, eco bill, eco bill. It is a no fact that the total cost of building is very expensive in Africa. We don't need to worry because you face a structure back. I am Bukaka Vasito Mokabu and I am the PRO of New Face. New Face is a company founded in 2020 by a group of Brookstone students, driven with a passion to provide sustainable solutions to environmental issues. We came up with the Echo Build, our products, which consists of the Echo Brick and Echo Block. Our product is made up of bush violence, dry sand, and high density polythene. You should choose us because our unique use of plastic waste makes our product eco-friendly, very cheap, and very easy to install. If you take a look around you, you will see a lot of plastic waste littered in our surroundings. And our goal and motive is to reduce plastic waste to the barest minimum while providing a cost-effective alternative to cement blocks. We work with a local network of scavengers to gather high-density polyethylene plastics for our production. During the production process, we melt plastics in a big pan and add sand in the correct proportions. The mixture is left to set and later on poured into a mold for drying and hardening. In about 24 hours time, an echo brick or an echo towel is ready for installation and a kitchen room, the production of a soil new face. To add to that, over 2,000 tons of plastic waste is generated on a daily basis in Lagos, Nigeria. Can you just imagine what the whole of Nigeria generates every single day? Nigeria is just one country in Africa, 
So imagine what the whole of Africa generates every single day. Now, let's look at it on a wider scale. Africa is one continent out of seven. So can you just imagine what the whole world generates every single day? Most of these plastic wastes are non-biodegradable. This means that they end up polluting our land, ocean and seas. This is a very serious problem. When plastic waste is introduced into the ocean and seas, this causes fish to die of plastic ingestion. This reduces our food supply and as a result causes a problem in food security. In of recent times, the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria estimated that over 68 million Nigerians are either poorly housed or are homeless. And the World Bank estimates that over 1.8 billion people globally either live in substandard houses or are poorly housed. This is the reason that, as a company, we came up with our product, the Echo Build. The Echo Build consists of the Echo Interlocking Tiles and the Echo Brick. As our production officer said, our materials are found in the environment, which makes our cost of production very low. This allows us to sell our products at a very cheap price compared to the prices of our competitors. This allows our products to be perfect for low-cost housing and it also enables our products to be economical. One of the value propositions of our products is that it's very economical. Our product is the Echo Build, which consists of both the Echo Blocks and the Echo Tiles. A normal cement block costs around 150 naira to 300 naira, which is about $0.3 to $0.6. But our Echo Bricks, which cost 100 naira, and have a cost of production of 50 naira. And our Echo Tiles, which cost 50 naira, and have a cost of production of 20 naira, are way easier to use and are always recommended to most of our clients. When building an average two bedroom flat, we use about 2,000 cement blocks, which will cost you around 600,000 naira, and in dollars, which will be 1,276 dollars. But if you use our echo bricks, you will use 4,400 bricks, and we will spend about 440,000 naira, which will make you save 160,000 naira. This is why our product is recommended to middle class income earners in Africa. Our target market is the government, research companies, and other individuals willing to buy build houses at lower costs. According to the website globalrecyclinggen.com, the last decade has been the hottest on the record. And we are facing climate, a climate emergency of unparalleled proportions. And with no rapid changes, there will be no planet to call home. So I urge you to find us new phase as we make the planet cleaner and safer. One plastic waste at a time. Thank you so much, our new face, Team Nigeria. At this time, I'll open it up for questions from our judges. So I wanted to find out from the Nigeria team whether they have uh, maybe initiated, they've uh, initiated some discussion with the government. Uh, I mean, what is the approach? Uh, because I've seen the government is part of the target. Have they already started approaching the government or is there a communication or plan to reach the government and see maybe if they can uh, um, get a hold on this pro project, which actually in terms of cost benefits is uh, better than, uh, it's less costly than going for the, the normal uh, cement brick. So I wanted to find out uh, how far they are uh, with the government, if they are still being targeted in their plan or whether they have engaged some discussion with the government to find out maybe, yeah, where they are. We haven't contacted them yet, but we plan to keep in contact with them very soon. And what's the strategy around your, your interaction with them? So what are your plans? How are you reaching out? What is the plan that you're, you're going to be using? Due to, the, due to the pandemic protocols, for now we use social media online. Because we can't like, move to have physical meetings with them. We can arrange for Zoom meetings or send emails to them. Hello, um, very interesting idea. I had a, a, a one question, but that's broken into two. Um, you came with the cost of production. How many uh, bricks can you produce currently and what are you targeting to produce in the near future? 
Um, and the second part of it is, are these bricks, um, have you went through a process to try to get them approved uh, maybe by the uh, labor a laboratory on their solidity and reliability? Thank you. We make 24 bricks per day. And we plan to increase it as people invest in our products and expand our products in the near future. For now, our products have been professionally approved, but we've done flame tests and drug tests and both were successful. So my question is, uh, are there already examples of buildings that has been constructed with your product yet? Yes. Okay. Yes, we are. Then my suggestion would be really uh, cool if you use such a, like a picture or something to show in your uh, future uh, communication material. So that, that would be a really uh, nice thing to, to show the final uh, outcome. And then building on that, I read through your financials like balance sheet and cost comparison. What was the... Uh, profit uh, from last year? It was not 100% clear for me. Our revenue which we received was 150,000 Naira. And we spent 64,800 Naira on our cost of production, giving us a net profit of 6,160 Naira. So that was our profit from that. Thank you. I, I wanted to chime in. Um, Team Nigeria, can you give the profit expense and, and uh, the revenue in U.S. dollars, please. Can you give those numbers in U.S. dollars? Uh, okay, the rate, I, the rate of exchange that we used was one naira to four hundred and sixty. Sorry, it was one dollar to four hundred and sixty naira using the black market, black market exchange rate, December two thousand twenty. So our profit in dollars would be one hundred and nineteen dollars. Bill, uh, Nigeria, uh, different concepts and, 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 and innovations are being introduced in the construction industry, um, in particular bricks. Um, in your view, what is that one unique thing that uh, your product has against um, the rest of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the innovations? Our product is unique because, number one, we are solving, we are help, we are solving the problem of house deficits. And we are also reducing plastic waste in the environment, and which is also very cheap and easy to install than normal cement bricks. Uh, thanks, Camille, and uh, thanks, Team Nigeria. I think that's a very brilliant uh, project that you have uh, you have there. I, I just have a question in terms of uh, client feedback, and I don't know if you've tested this with any uh, customer yet. Uh, what are some of the uh, the, the things that are coming out from your customers uh, in terms of uh, the bricks that they're using being made of plastic. Uh, what, are, what are the major differences that they, can to, they get to see uh, uh, in comparison to cement bricks? Uh, could it be that uh, maybe they make the houses uh, hotter uh, than the cement bricks? Uh, any leakages and things of that nature? I know on the cost uh, side, I think you are very clear. It's quite cost effective. But I wanted to hear in terms of quality, uh, what are you hearing from uh, uh, some of the people who've tested this? We haven't been able to, we haven't been able to have feedback from customers due to the pandemic restrictions like in our beds. For now, we have made, we are just producing our products so we can sell this like after the pandemic. Thank you so much, uh, Team Nigeria. We appreciate you telling us a lot about your product um, and the work that went into kind of getting it to the market. Uh, thank you so much. At this time, the judges will take a few moments to uh, review um, and score. There was a time when Einstein himself couldn't count to 10. Even the great Shakespeare had to learn his ABCs just like the rest of us. That's to say that nobody is born smart. Whether it's reading or algebra, nobody is good at anything at first. But thankfully, we are born to learn. And with Learnex, we are here to jumpstart that process. With Learnex, schools can register on the platform and provide their students with live classes, pre-recorded lessons, assignments, and certificates while monitoring students' attendance. 
Students can also explore a variety of courses outside their school with lifetime access from renowned independent instructors. LearnX is equipped with multilingual support. We are also pride of ourselves in a vast library of reading, material to help learners on their journey. Whether you seek to teach, improve your resume, expand your knowledge or cover your syllabi, LearnX is the right place for you. A seven day free trial awaits for you. Visit www.xonline and start learning. At a certain point in time, we all need doctors, teachers, entrepreneurs, among other occupants. But what if coronavirus was yet to stay? What if coronavirus was in the last pandemic? Recently, we have heard about the Nepal virus with a fatality rate of 75%. What if this was the next pandemic? So many schools in Africa do not have textbooks. If we were to open schools in the next three months, how many governments would be able to buy textbooks after such economic turndowns, especially if they weren't able to buy them during the normal course? How hard would that affect the academic life for the future generations? Worry not, that's why we are here. We as Piram Holdings developed a platform aimed at providing affordable education across the globe, LearnX. Yet LearnX will find a variety of courses, a library, a school management system, practice examinations, and a bookshop with sales physical textbooks. LearnX also offers vacancy for teachers and instructors willing to upload their lessons and courses respectively. T classes can be taken by use of pre-recorded videos, live classes, notes, exams, among other features. Our platform is both a website and an application. Our platform can also be used during and after the lockdown period. I'm Tedouan Boyasango, reporting from the CEO's desk. Of late, the marketing of a business has taken a new shape and this is the form of digital marketing. We created our social media platforms, that is Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We have also monetized our YouTube channel. The company makes use of both business to business and business to consumer type of model in which we marketed LearnX by targeting everyone. We, use, we also use targeted Facebook and Instagram ads. LearnX offers a lot of books relevant from kindergarten level to tertiary level in the language that the user understands which are affordable and reliable. Apart from LearnX, we hosted several projects which comprise of film show and reselling of chocolates which were marketed through word of mouth and posters which were scheduled with the scheduled dates, pages and trading movies to be watched. The future is bright for Linux and this is the revolution of technology in Zimbabwe and across Africa. Reporting from the marketing director's desk is still unmuted. It was extremely difficult working in the COVID-19 environment, but we were able to utilize the little time we had. Amidst the COVID-19 crisis, our company was able to solve a global challenge with the introduction of LearnX. We developed our platform using WordPress. During the test, the platform showed to be slow and browsing costs were high. Therefore, our team used a compression algorithm that helped reduce loading time and costs. LearnX was then launched on the 18th of January 2021, and we are now working on enrolling teachers. A few courses have been uploaded, and we are working with Goromonzi High School to be the first learning institution to be registered at LearnX. Our team is now working on acquiring more books and getting African syllabuses in the near future. I'm Judy Chukusi, reporting from the production director's desk. Peter Maldon's company has 29 shareholders. Our board is comprised of five board directors, and we managed to include 10 members to our leadership structure as our support team. Our company carried out a social responsibility at Jairus G Association through a donation. We picked litter around the school campus and we also planted trees around the school hostel. LearnX was built in such a way that its development revolved around the skills possessed by the members of the company. Each board member brought what they could to the table and no workers were hired as the task to be carried out was distributed across to the members of the company based on skill set. No costs were incurred in recruitment and training. Our team is working on acquiring more diverse skills as to save the company better and fail. Despite the challenges faced due to the lockdown restrictions caused by COVID-19, our determination and teamwork helped us to successfully work on our project. I'm Ruarashe Chigamba reporting from the HRS desk. The company adopted to dollarization and each investor invested $10, something to $290. We acquired a license to host a local film for $19 and hosted 212 students paying $3 each, summing to $636, and also sold watches 
and chocolates, generating an income of $220. We used $8.88 for web hosting and $14.60 for, for domain registration for our product, LenX. The revenue streams for LenX will be as follows. $1,000 registration fee for schools, $1.99 per month library subscription, book sellers, $5 registration and 5% commission on each book sold, 5% commission on sales of courses. We need $10,000 to enroll local and international teachers for LearnX, acquire more books, courses, buying security plugins, and going beyond our border. If you are planning for a year, so rise. If you are planning for a decade, plant trees. If you are planning for a lifetime, educate people. Thank you so much, Team Zimbabwe. At this time, I open the floor for the judges to ask questions. Um, first and foremost, very good uh, idea to show your product's uh, user interface through your presentation. Um, my key question is, um, at what point do you think that you would have enough volume of content, meaning textbooks, publishers, um, things so that you can actually go live uh, with, the, with the product and satisfy the needs of, for example, your uh, education system, uh, not, not the local one? working on uploading more books and acquiring more books from different publishers and different sponsors. Uh, thanks, uh, Team Zimbabwe. Good uh, initiative there. Uh, I like the idea that you have. Uh, I was looking at your report. I noticed that you sold watches, sold chocolate, and uh, you also showed a movie, uh, a film of some sort. You managed to sell more of uh, the other three products and service more than you did your core product, which is Lenex. Uh, what have you learned from that? And uh, what do you intend to do in order to increase your sales for your core product, uh, which is Lenex? What happened was we, we, the ending period for trading ended at, we launched our products to, towards the end of the trading period. Thereby we, we, did, we haven't, we hadn't made so much profits by then. And we also learned to put the customers first. Um, Zimbabwe, uh, just like Eswatini, I believe uh, your country has those remote areas where there's challenges with uh, resources and um, network coverage. Um, how do you intend dealing with that as a, as a company? Um, so we intend to fix that by putting more radio broadcasting that, that will help us in making sure that everyone gets the information. And we are also planning to ask the government if they can um, actually put some computer areas in the remote areas so that everyone can access the online data. Yeah, I, I, I had a quick question about how, how you've been able to acquire customers. So, you know, the, 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 I think the, the few clients that you got, can you walk us through, you know, how you were able to acquire those customers and, um, and why they bought, they bought your technology? Um. We used um, targeted Facebook and Instagram ads to people between the age of 12 and 24 who are mostly students in school, um, who are in college, and who are also taking courses as well. So there was much traffic from that age range. So team, congratulations on the presentation, great work. And uh, I'm personally very, very passionate or very uh, connected to the idea of uh, education technology. And having said that, I would share a couple of uh, insights. One is don't worry that uh, you are not generating much subscriptions now. So when I saw how you creatively try to fund or finance the starting phase it's it's fine it's uh, i can just advise you to be persistent and and patient there you have a great product and second uh, i would encourage you also to look into the uh, area of informal education meaning 
uh, mentoring. So uh, a lot of, of uh, countries all over the world, even here in Europe, the school system is a bit uh, standard. And with such a platform, you have an opportunity to connect students with mentors or uh, experts to advise them or coach them on very specific topics that are not necessarily like the school exams and so on. And uh, this could open for you a good market beyond the schools, which I think should remain your focus one. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And a closing remark, I invite you when you want to continue on growing this idea to, to get in touch. You can uh, uh, connect with your uh, Camille or Asoka and uh, reach out to me by email because I worked on several edtech projects before and I will be happy to share much more details uh, outside the, the time limit we have now. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for extending that offer to our students um, from Zimbabwe, Mohammed, we appreciate it. Um, any other judges have questions? Awesome. So thank you so much, um, Team Zimbabwe. At this time, uh, we, you know, again, bravo on your presentation. We appreciate um, you sharing and uh, for us learning a little bit more. At this time, the judges will take some time uh, to review um, and score. Thank you. My name is Saranga Isaac, Managing Director, Make Investments JA Company, King's College, Budo, Kampala, Uganda. Our team comprises of Kabanda Timothy, Public Relations Officer, Katende Jeremiah, Marketing and Sales of Manager, Wablembo Jethro, Finance, Finance Manager. Our vision is to see a malaria-free Africa. Our mission is to provide a cheap and affordable, readily available product for protection from mosquito bites. Our values include integrity, accountability, providing quality products and innovation. I would like to hand you over to Kawanda Timothy, the Public Relations Officer. Hello, hi guys. My name is Kawanda Timothy Malcolm from the MECJA company and I'm the Public Relations Officer. We have made research that there are 229 million cases worldwide through the World Health Organization's report in November 2020. We have come up with a preventive measure of using a mosquito repellent that is called Mosquito Impervious. This is a product that will be able to prevent mosquito bites that cause the infection. And now I hand it over to the sales manager of MECJA investments company to elaborate more. My name is Katende Jeremiah and I'm the marketing and sales manager of MECJ and Company. The product we present to you today is Mosquito Impervious. It is comprised of lemongrass oil, distilled water and vinegar as a preservative. Our marketing strategy is to use social media to keep in touch with our customers and to collect customer details and to keep them updated with our company's progressions by use of our email, makeinvestmentsjacompany at gmail.com. The sales of the financial year October 2020 to January 2021 have been 988,000 Uganda shillings, which is converted to 270.7 US dollars. This has acted as a foundation for our goals in the future to improve sales nationally and eventually grow to an international scale to create a malaria-free Africa. I would like to pass on to Jethro Wabulembo, our financial manager. Hi, my name is Wabulembo Jethro. I am the finance manager for Make Investments JA Company. 
We collected capital for this company through selling of shares. Each share was valued at 1,500 Uganda shillings and each of us contributed 18 shares per person and each person totaled up 27,000 shillings worth of shares and in total the five of us were able to collect 135,000 shillings as our starting capital. We used this capital to begin production and through production we've carried out some sales. We were able to sell 270 units and this brought about 988,000 Uganda shillings as our returns from the sales. Um, translated to dollars is at $270. Through uh, subtracting the expenses in production from the income returned, we got uh, approximately 881,000 Uganda shillings, which is $230 as our net profit. We plan using this net profit to reinvest it into the business in order to expand and set up a steady production. Thank you. Some of the challenges we faced include limited customers and language barrier. We've dealt with this through promotion, more promotion of the product and recruiting a person who has the ability to speak the native language, which is Luganda. We thank the organizers and sponsors of this great opportunity. We call upon you to buy our product and we look forward to seeing a malaria-free Africa. Thank you. Thank you so much, Team Uganda. Great presentation. And I love the call out at the end with action to purchase. That was very impactful. Thank you so much. At this time, I'll open it up for questions from our judges. Um, Uganda, how are you? Thank you. Um, okay, one is a comment, the other one is a question. Uh, my comment is is that I, I would have loved a, 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 a to see both on the report and presentation a a, re, a ratio of uh, the composition of your ingredients um, on why the use of, of, of lemongrass, why the use of vinegar, and uh, the racial composition again. But my question is just a random question. Um, if you were to meet the Minister for Health in Uganda, uh, what would be that one request and why? If we were to meet the Minister of Health in Uganda, our one request would be to ask for aid in distributing this product because our product is agro-based and is economically viable. It would be achieved, it would be able to be purchased by many people in our country, which solves the problem that we are striving to relinquish. It would solve the problem of malaria in the country with our cheap and agro-based products, which would also reduce the its negative effect on the environment, which is arising from other methods of preventing malaria by using spray cans like doom which pollute the environment, yeah. Um, I have a question in regards to the, the, um, the products, the actual ingredients within the products, like when it was tested to say that these products or these ingredients are viable or impactful, like what, what quality assurance process did you went through or um, process did you, you know, kind of, to the product through in order to kind of be able to put that stamp of approval and say that this in fact does have that effect and reduces malaria, reduces mosquito bite. What survey, what tools, what channel, what, you know, what resource did you leverage to be able to be able to say that? Cause we want to make sure that if you're saying that you have some kind of backing to support that claim and not just saying it. Um, in Uganda, we traditionally have been using certain hubs to solve certain um, certain health issues. For example, malaria. For malaria, we use this plant lemongrass oil. It's locally known as chai subi, and it has been known um, to keep away mosquitoes, and it has also been tested. Thank you. And it's tested by, when you said it's been tested. The effect wow. of 
Sure. The effect of chai sube, like locally in Uganda, is something that has been passed down. It's part of like our culture. So it would be like adapting something that is part of the African culture into a modern point of view. Like the way that Bitenji, Bitenji is African, like African prince. It's like how they've been adapted into modern day fashion. So that's the basis that we established the use of chai sube oil in our mosquito repellent. Okay, wonderful. So as a next step, what I would recommend, um, since it's a, you know, culturally you're using herbs that have been used from you know, long generations, now I would get the scientific aspect of it to get some kind of certification to validate that this in fact does have this result, if that makes sense. So my question is more into the scalability of your production. I'm just trying to think, for example, if you were to be, uh, if you were to receive sufficient funds to finance your production, what do you look like as your next challenge in terms of scaling your production? If we received sufficient funds and uh, we started production, I think the next step would be um, taking it all across the country, distributing it across the country and across East Africa and Africa at large. Yeah. Let me, let me rephrase my question. I mean, looking at your production line, ability to produce, do you feel like you have sufficient uh, to make you produce more? Or are there anything that you look to increase uh, so that you can have more production? Okay. Um, in terms of production, in the situation, let's say that we've established ourselves in Kampala. Kampala is the capital city of Uganda. It would be the first place that we would establish because in Kampala, we also face a lot of mosquitoes because despite the fact that it's a city, we still have a lot of nature. We still have a lot of the swamps and some streams that would that facilitate malaria. We also have a lot of water stagnance that comes along with having a capital city in Africa. So given that we have been well established and we have sufficient funds, our one problem would be sorry, our one problem would be expanding to other parts of Uganda. In our country, we have a prejudice of monopoly. In our country, people are more likely to buy more of one brand. So expanding to other other parts of the country might prove difficult, but it's something that we'd be able to overcome over time. Just, just one question. In your reports, um, um, you say there is some kind of partnership. Um, what kind of partnership is that, if I may ask? Um, the business, uh, the formation, as we formed the business, we formed as partners, we formed it as partners, the five of us although only two of us are representing right now. And the partnership also is a lot to do in tie with junior achievers as a whole in working together to attain mentorship and new ideas in developing our product. So the partnership is between us and junior achievers, us the stakeholders and junior achievers as well. Thank you so much, Team Uganda. Great presentation, wonderful product and impact that you're having in your community. Um, that's our time. Uh, so have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much again. Judges, at this time, we will uh, score. I'm sure you already know the drill. At this point, we'll be taking another break so that our judges can collate results. Remember, you should go into the comment section and like your team. They're doing absolutely amazing. Um, there's so much hope for the future, isn't this? If this is what um, our young students can come up with. But we have so much more right after the break.
In just a few years, Africa will have the largest workforce in the world. How we prepare our youth today for the 21st century workforce will determine the future of entire economies, not just in Africa, but beyond. Day Africa's relationship with City started as far back as 1999, and City has been an incredible supporter of JA's work in Africa. City has a program called Pathway to Progress, which is really about youth employment, youth uh, economic opportunity, and youth skills enhancement. And that's, of course, very much aligned with everything that JA is about. Pathways to Progress is a commitment by City Foundation to impact the lives of young people in cities around the world. It is City and the City Foundation's response to the persistent issue of youth unemployment globally. Pathways to Progress initiative supports programs that help young people ages 16 to 24, helps them build an entrepreneurial mindset, acquire leadership, financial and workplace skills, and begin to engage in the formal economy through a first job. Since the beginning of our engagement with City, we've been reaching about 4,000 students per year uh, through the company program in its time, and we've also created over 800 different enterprises. It's a very important relationship for us, but it's not just important because of the source of funding and the size of funding, which is of course very useful for us as a nonprofit organization. It's important because it's a match where we are aligned in what we're trying to do in the world. The city backs up that support with by providing uh, the time of its staff to be able to enhance JA's program. The benefits go both ways. Uh, city employees really do enjoy working alongside young people, testing new ideas and developing innovative solutions and products. Our volunteering with JA Africa provides an important opportunity for young people to meet and learn from city employees and gain valuable insight from a global bank into how to prepare themselves for productive life in their respective economies. Youth economic empowerment in Africa is a critical and it's one of the most important callings uh, that we have to address for the future of this continent. It's very important that we equip young people with entrepreneurship education because we have to change the narrative of education to respond to the changing reality. The truth is, not every child who's graduating from school now will go into a ready job that's available. The jobs just aren't there. And we have to give them the opportunity and the ability to create their own jobs and jobs for others. Of all the numbers that matter in business, here's the one that matters most. 7.7 .7 billion. Because that's how many people there are on this planet. We believe in an inclusive, sustainable digital economy that works for everyone. So every day, we work with banks, merchants, businesses, cities and governments to solve human needs with human ideas. Every capability we build on, every investment we make, and every partnership we enter into is driven by MasterCard's mission to improve people's lives. We're helping retailers reimagine how people shop, developing new digital first payment experiences, helping independent workers thrive in the gig economy, enabling people and businesses to move money around the world, making transactions of all kinds safer and more secure, Developing new artificial intelligence solutions to detect and fight fraud. Giving people and businesses more control over their financial data. Modernizing commercial payments for businesses of all sizes all around the world. Empowering every business everywhere to drive economic equality. All in a pursuit of our vision of an economy where everyone can reach their potential. And we continue to redefine the look, the feel, and even the sound of a brand that touches the lives of billions of people every day. At MasterCard, we are here to help our partners help people. Because we believe when you start with people, you can start something priceless. Tomorrow Foundation is a Swiss charity foundation aiming at making Africa a more economically developed, politically stable and culturally confident continent. 
the Foundation gives access to technologies, training and assistance that could result in maximum social and economic impacts in Africa. From water projects to skills development, technical assistance or governance advisory, the Foundation is active in the areas of education, energy, health and agriculture. Our founder, Mrs Maggie Yu, has a long experience in international affairs and the public sector in Europe and Africa. She has always been concerned with human development. She has a professional medical degree and a Master of Communications and Public Relations, an MBA of Global Management in the United States, and a Master of International Relations and Economy in Switzerland. We believe that learning-based development, empowerment, autonomy and collaboration have greater effectiveness than traditional assistance through funding or turnkey solutions. We consider youth education as a priority to create future leaders and a possibility of change. We developed the concept of soft barriers building, the idea that the multiplication of small-scale development projects, easy to start and addressing most urgent needs of specific communities, is the best way to fight against marginalization and radicalization of most vulnerable populations. The Foundation acts also at a larger scale, an upper level of the populations in need, promoting and assisting the development of more efficient and fairer economic policies and international cooperation. Tomorrow Foundation. Strive today. Strive for tomorrow. Today's youth are tomorrow's global leaders. Here at the PMI Educational Foundation, we envision a future focused on youth and the nonprofits that serve them as they work toward building life skills through project management. By focusing on partnerships with nonprofit organizations around the world, PMIEF prepares youth for education, career, and community engagement by enhancing the development of their critical life skills. Eu aprendi a ser liderado e também a ser líder. It will help me to speak loud and proud and loud and confident. And I think that really helped me and my peers. Nonprofits all over the world understand the value of teaching life competencies to youth. That's why PMIEF is focusing on youth-targeted nonprofits around the globe. By embedding engaging project management concepts into these organizations, we help give the world's youth the competencies to be inspired, successful adults through valuable life skills. With the PMIEF grant, I'm certain and very excited that it will really help us to um, further this mission, to improve um, the lives of children, to help children not just to survive in this world, but to thrive, um, not only in South Africa and the continent, but really to have an impact on the entire, entire world. When we teach the world's youth to apply project management skills in their lives, we unlock their potential and open doors to collaboration, critical thinking, creativity, and communication. These skills will be critical for youth around the globe to succeed in an increasingly competitive world. You are a critical part of our strategy. Your skills, enthusiasm, and financial support can help make our vision a reality. At PMIEF, we believe in project management for social good. big thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you so much. We're so grateful. We wouldn't have been able to do this without you. Thank you very, very much. And now we go into our final group 
of the day. And they'll be presenting in this order. South Africa will go first, then Ghana, and then Cote d'Ivoire. Turn to the seasons of the heart long gone. Some wise words from the infamous Italian composer Giano Carlo Minotti. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Georgina Enoch, and I'm one of the general managers at Music Plaques for You. I am Emily Makoba, and I'm the administrative manager in our company. And both Georgina and I attend Dow Park Girls High School. My name is Fiancetti, and I'm also one of the general managers. And finally, I am Sven Naidu. I am the stock control at our company, and both Fian and I attend North Boys High School. Our company, Music Plax for You, provides customers with a contemporary way to listen to music. Due to COVID-19 hitting the world so abruptly, this is our way of providing people who have lost loved ones with a long-lasting physical memory of them. Because music plays such an important role in many people's lives, our mission statement is, Music Plax for You aims to provide consumers with an innovative way to remember their favorite songs and all of the special memories associated with them. In determining which product to manufacture, we use market and product research to narrow our choice to three potential products. Together, the company decided on three potential products that we could possibly sell. After polling 126 individuals in our target market research, the analysis pointed us to the glass music clocks. We then met with multiple suppliers and printers to see if they would be able to supply and produce the product we desired. After trying many suppliers, we finally found one that would fulfill all the specifications of our desired product. Thereafter, we received a sample of our product from our chosen supplier. We then knew we made the right choice. Similarly, when choosing our product, we had to determine certain product specifications. So, this brings me to the question of the day. What are we selling? The product we have manufactured is called a glass music clock. The clock is an A5 piece of glass which consists of printed photo of album art of your choice, including the title of your favorite song along with the artist exactly how it would look if you played the song from your smart device. By adding Apple Music or a Spotify QR code, to name just two, this allows the user to scan and access a specific song from the smart device. This was our way of taking a prolific idea and making it even more innovative. After choosing our idea, we then started the process of bringing this grand idea to life, and we did this through operations and production. We followed up by receiving the best price from all of our suppliers, we created a variable cost on all the materials and services we would need to manufacture our product. During production, each company member photoshopped their album art for their customers. Once all the photoshops were done, we sent this artwork along with the glass to the printer for printing. After receiving the orders, we checked for the quality of each product. If there were any errors, we sent these back to the printer to have them redone. We also checked to see if the orders we received corresponded with the orders we sent through. The sales manager distributed the blocks to each company member. We produced and sold a total of 164 glass music blocks. During the production process, we ensured we followed COVID-19 protocols. Amongst the many successes, there were also some challenges which included absenteeism. Throughout the program, there were many company members that weren't able to join our meetings due to internet connection problems. Similarly, decision-making was difficult, so then we formed a WhatsApp group which made it easier for us to make decisions. In addition, we also had to deal with time constraints due to school year being so rushed. We often found that we didn't have a lot of contact time with all the company members, which put pressure on the company to find more efficient ways to get things done quicker. The advantages, however, outweighed the challenges. Being completely customizable was the biggest attraction and coupled the state-of-the-art technology that replicates the image on glass makes this a tangible means of transferring memories into a product that ensures longevity. This customizability expanded our target market from 12 being our youngest to 60 being our oldest. We produced and sold a total of 164 glass music blocks. 
We sold each block for 100 Rand, bringing our total sales to 16,400 Rand. The total cost of each block was 54 Rand 50 cents. We made a net profit of 5,762 Rand. For our CSI, we made a donation to an 11 year old girl by the name of Jewel, who had a TMJ dysfunction. We supported Jewel and her family by making a donation so that Jewel can have a corrective surgery. Going forward, we'd like to expand our business as well as grow our social media page and receive a 10% increase during the first half of 2021. Now that our company has been established amongst many schools in Durban. Through this program, we gained immense business knowledge, as well as being corporately and socially responsible. We also learned many leadership skills, and most importantly, being a creative thinker in the corporate world. As we draw to a conclusion, we are immensely thankful to Citibank, Junior Achievement South Africa, and finally, Junior Achievement Africa, for sponsoring the development of our youth, building business thinkers, magnifying our world of work, and for changing our lives. Right, great presentation. Uh, uh, and um, great, di you know, di digging in into your product and and talking about, you know, all the different nuances that you faced, but also talking about how you were able to overcome those nuances. At this time, we'll turn it over to our first judge that will ask a question, Liban. Congratulations, first of all, on the creativity of your product. Um, I think that you might be on the verge of something that will generate uh, revenues in a in a music industry on the continent that has a lot of difficulty monetizing. Um, but my key question lies in the uh, backend aspect because um, if somebody's gonna use the image of an artist or album art or, or an album, um, there should be a backend agreement uh, with this artist um, because uh, in, a, in a sense, you are making him a promotion, getting people to come and stream. So it's something he would like, but there has to be some type of legal protection. Have you, have you looked into that? So we have looked into that. Um, we did get advice from two uh, senior management lawyers uh, in South Africa. And they did say that because we were making this product for a... Um, school purposes, it would be very hard for us to get any infringements and copyrights on our product because it is for educational purposes. But if we did have to continue the business after the program, we would have to get a copyright, uh, copyright allowance from the different and specific music platforms. Very good. Uh, I, I have two questions. The first question is, um, you know, uh, I've gone through your, through your report and I've noted that um, you are coming from um, different schools. So I wanted to know, I mean, what made you guys come together? What attracted you or um, pushed you guys to be to come together? Because I know you come from different schools. Is there any connection? I mean, how, how, how was this connection made between among you, among you guys. And my second question, uh, I noted you guys have sold 164 products. So uh, I wanted to find out what is the feedback you have from those clients who actually uh, are now or have been using your, your product. Thank you. Okay, to answer your first question, uh, both schools are based in Durban North and we're brother and sister schools. So we came together to do the program. And then we work together, and that's how the two schools would drink together. So to answer your second question, we sent out surveys after we uh, sold all of our products to our customers, and all the surveys came back with a positive response, so we felt that we did well. Gustav, to Team South Africa, uh, this is quite an interesting product that you're working on. Uh, I think, okay, if I'm right, I figure that uh, your production is actually done by a different company, a third party, I believe. How do you control the quality, but also the turnaround time of the production? Um, so, firstly, we would uh, pay them, and um, we spend a part of cost price for signing up the materials. And once you got it back, we we'll check to every single one. Of course, um, we would then use our other price for other raw materials, such as bubble wrap, to ensure if we did it, the correct quality will remain that way. Although, if it did come back not to adequate quality, we 
would send back or reject it and we would not use um, our battery application for it. And if you are overall unhappy, you may have thought about your companies, the provision, etc. Just to add on to that, um, we did have somebody to check quality of all the products. And whilst the person was checking quality, the product was packaged at the exact same time where we packaged our products in bubble wrap and then we did uh, package in a gift bag to ensure uh, safety when we were delivering the products. Hi guys. So I'm just quite curious. I, the target market right now is limited to someone who has uh, a Spotify account or an Apple Music subscription. Have you looked at targeting other customers or looking at people who don't have a subscription? With regards to that question, our plaque is completely customizable. So we do offer platforms. Uh, in our company report, we named, that was just to name two. So we did do Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, and then if you did have any other music provider, you could just let us know in the survey we did give out. So to all our customers, we gave them a form, a Google form, where they had to fill in uh, what either what their music platform is, the song, and so on. So it was completely customized when we could offer this to whoever and whatever music platform they are using. Um, thank you, Mzansi. My question is, uh, how do you intend balancing your academics and entrepreneurship? What's the strategy there? So we did write exams during our uh, production time and it was quite stressful, but we managed to keep a good balance between our business and our academics. So during the week, we'd focus a lot on school, but on weekends, we put a lot of our effort into the company and make sure everything was done on time. Okay, so I actually start a question. I'm very um, amazed by the idea. So it was a suggestion to our young entrepreneurs. Um, in your client base, you should look at the record labels and the artists themselves, because this would be a very a strong merchandising product for them uh, to be able to promote their music and to give out to their fans via social media platforms which will create basically that the artist will become your salesperson or the record company will become your salesperson. And it will augment your revenue streams and uh, go around the problematic that you might have of copyrights because it's the copyright holder that's basically the client for your product. We love it. Thank you so much, Team South Africa. Again, wonderful presentation, great innovative product. At this time, the judges will take some time to review and uh, score. Thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day and great job and good luck. Are you struggling to get fit? Are your diets not working out? Are the workouts too intense? Then Selfmade is the solution to your problems with customized diets and workout plans. Business is easier. We are Selfmade. With just one click on our app, you can unlock your best self. By setting a goal, selecting your interests and receiving professional consultation, Selfmade is the best business app. Selfmade. Fitter. Healthier. Happier. How would you feel if you lost both your loved ones within the span of 11 days? Well, that's the story of Miss Monette Hicks, the woman who lost both her children to COVID-19 recently. The underlying condition of this drastic event was obesity. Now, BBC reports that Dr. Anita Textone of Public Health England says that being obese or overweight puts you at a greater chance of dying from COVID-19. Now, we all know that COVID-19 is killing people, regardless of ethnicity, race, gender, and many other factors, based on predispositions that are usually a result of unhealthy lifestyle and imbalanced diet. Worry no more, ladies and gentlemen. Self-made is here to save the day. Here at Self-made, our mission is simple. To provide a fresh experience of uncompromising quality that meets the specific health and fitness needs of each individual. Let me introduce the team. My name is Jackie Buba and I'm the Chief Finance Officer of Selfmade. Cheryl Kuma is the Chief Executive Officer and Adam Jare is the Chief Operations Officer. If you stick with me, we'll dive into the statistics, our financial, our marketing strategy, as well as our future plans. Did you know that global obesity rates have increased from 4.0 in 1990 to 9.2 in 2020? And to narrow it down, Almost 3 million children in Ghana are either obese or overweight, putting them at a greater risk of dying from COVID-19 or any other serious illness. What exactly is self-made? 
It's the first and only Ghanaian fitness app that provides specialized plans with certified dietitians and trainers in order to help our consumers live a healthier lifestyle. Here's how we work. First, you set your goals and select your interests. Then you receive a free trial sample menu or you can immediately pay for a consultation which gives you a customized menu. Then you can live a fitter, healthier and happier life. What exactly do you get? Self-made gives you restaurant coupons with our partnered healthy restaurants, workout plans by trainers who have had amazing clients' results, and dietitians at your fingertips. As seen on the comparison charts, our business has some competitors who have some features we don't, but the reason we are better is because we are culturally inclusive, specialized, and interconnected with our surroundings. All these apps are not suited or tailored for Ghanaians. Marketing plays a major role in the startup and expansion of our business. Our product, which is a self-made app, is easy to use, fast, compatible with all devices, and innovative. We will have many places in which our app will be available, on our website, on the App Store, and on the Android Store. Our app will be promoted by our partners at their various locations with flyers and coupons. Since the world is a global village and social media has become a major driving force, we would actually use social media to promote our products. The initial price of our products for the first two months will be free to incentivize users to buy our app. After the second month, month, choices would be available to purchase a specialized plan or receive our standardized plan for a specific period of time. Our value proposition, self-made is customized, well-renowned and inclusive. Customized because self-made is able to create plans to meet every user's specific needs. That is to take into consideration the products the customer has access to, their genders, body types, interests, hobbies and many other factors. We are well-renowned because we partner with registered dietitians and well-renowned fitness trainers, ensuring the best and only the best for our clients. We are inclusive because we include local Ghanaian dishes, and this allows our customers to have a wide variety of easily accessible foods which are healthy, affordable, and make living a healthier lifestyle easier. Now to our financials, we will need a startup capital of 12,000 cities and our revenue streams consist of partnerships, advertisements of health related businesses and subscription fees. So we hope to receive a revenue of 185,000 cities by the end of year 3. To our expenses which consist of app maintenance, marketing and ads, partnership fees, internal bills and commission fees which by year 3 we expect to cost us 43,200 cities. And lastly, to our profits, which in year one we expect to gain 3,800 CDs, year two, 25,000 CDs, and after an expanded subscriber base, 141,800 CDs in year three. Now to our future plans, where we hope to expand self-made by upgrading the plan and making it easier to become fitter, healthier, and happier. We would also like to partner with more Ghanaian businesses, making it available to more Ghanaians all across the country. And lastly, we would love to go global and reaching other continents. Once again, thank you so much, JA, for this opportunity. Thank you so much again, Team Ghana. Great presentation. At this time, I'll open it up for questions from our judges. I have two questions. The first question is actually um, related to expenses. Uh, well, looking at your presentation, <laughs> I've noted the expenses have gone, let's say from year one, 34,000 CDs and Ghanaian CDs, a year two, 35,000. And then we go, when we go to year three, we actually reach to 43,000. So I just want to understand, I mean, what's, uh, what's, what drives such an increase compared to the first two years? Is there any investment plan? Is there, are you guys trying to hire more people? I mean, just want to understand from, I mean, what drives that, that, that significant increase in terms, of, in terms of expenses. My second question, uh, well, looking at the product, uh, because you indicated that we have, uh, let's, let's say, three, three million uh, in terms of statistics of people in Ghana who are likely or um, facing the obesity, let's say, uh, issue. And uh, from the presentation that, uh, that you just uh, watched, you, you guys are indicating that uh, this 
uh, self-made applications uh, it should be available from App Store. And my question is, uh, are you guys intending to have this product available to the most needy uh, persons? Because if we are trying, if we are marketing this from App Store, it means that people need to have access to internet, people need to have Android phones capabilities. So I just want to understand, uh, are you guys planning, uh, I mean, is there a, a type of uh, target market you guys, are, you guys want to reach? Or there's a plan, let's say, to, to reach in a, in a broader target market, even people who are not, do not have access to internet or do not have access to such uh, sophisticated cell phones? Okay, so in regards to the um, financial numbers, um, our presentation was even updated and I don't think um, you guys received our updated presentation, which was in dollars, just for a general you know, conversion of the um, units of the currency. So we updated that one to dollars and um, with the expenses, we do plan on expanding um, and increasing our investments into our business. We also plan on producing merchandise and even partnering with more um, health and fitness related companies. Therefore, the um, amount was expected to increase, but we did convert it and made, make some edits to our um, expenses, our um, financials. Yeah. So I hope you guys will be able to um, do the updated presentation, the updated pitch. Okay, so I'm going to be answering the target market question. And our target market is actually young people, like in the uh, beginning tech markets, we're niching with young people in the beginning. So people that normally generally use phones, people that are more inclined to using um, devices, technical devices. And then as we go on, we're going to establish support groups in different parts of Ghana, and they will be able to meet together to be able to um, share it with the needy per se. Because when we are able to establish ourselves to a certain extent, then we'll start with our support groups, which would help other people, which would be like centers where you could come and basically use our app and use all the features of our app and you get the customized plans. But because Ghana is not necessarily technical, technologically advanced, we have to um, do both parts of it. But that is later on when we are more established and we've niched, we've, um, we've gotten the needs of our niche market, which are the young people right now. Yes, thank you. We have a couple of these uh, health applications um, available, but my question is centered around the production process. Uh, I think I missed it on the report and on the presentation as well. Uh, mine is to ask, uh, did you actually design the app yourselves? So, um, Aduma and I are the CEO and the CEO. We have background in computer science, so we actually designed the app ourselves because we are able to. We, are, we know how to code using Python and other. All this was mentioned in our updated um, presentation. Pitch, but, um, I don't think you received it. Yeah. So my question is, uh, how does the customization of uh, eating plan works today? Okay, so what happens is that when a user comes, when when a user starts using the app, a user enters the things that he or she prefers, like um, a way to like, um, a way to like keep the user going, like oh, the user likes to jog, the user likes to run, and we understand the things that he he, he or she likes to do. And then we compose a plan for the user using the things that he likes. So that it's not it's not that the user does not particularly enjoy, and then the user starts the plan and then stops using the plan. But it's something we 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 um we we weave in everything that the person wants to, um, to the person likes, yes, in creating the plan for the person. So we take them into consideration and we create a plan that is tailored towards the body or the fitness goal that they want to achieve. Mm -hmm. And is it something, uh, is it something programmable or, or you customize the plan based on preset, preset preferences, like if this, then that, from a coding perspective? Okay, so first of all, our, our algorithm is going to put them in specific places and match them with specific dietitians. So if they choose specific activities and they choose specific food types that they eat and they don't eat, specific places they live in, then they are matched with specific 
um, dietitians in that area. And then okay. from and then, giving them, yeah, they're going to help them make the customized plans. And then from then, we just, it's more geographical. And then our algorithm basically sorts it out for the geographical locations. Yes, please. Uh, hi, Team Ghana. Great initiative. I, I like uh, especially how you start your report with uh, bringing out the problem with the statistics, then uh, floating your solution there. Excellent work. Uh, in your report, you mentioned of uh, some partnerships that you're entering into with uh, certified dietitians as well as uh, some trainers and restaurants. How are these uh, partnerships going so far? And uh, how many of them have you entered into? Okay, so the one that we're sure of is a dietitian that we are using in our area right now because we wanted to have a prototype for each of us to use, like use our activities and all of that. So our main partnership right now is with a dietitian called Rima. And yeah, so uh, I mean, so our prototype, our prototype is with Rima. And basically what she does is that she helps us with our eating and our styles. And that's just specific for us. So when we do that, then that's our main our main partnership that we have right now established but then gyms and with food places we're now going to start establishing that um, later on because we want to make sure that we have dietitian lockdown because you can make your foods yourself and especially in this era we don't necessarily want people going out into places yet so for our prototype so it was safe for us we just used the dietitian thank you very much wonderful um that's it we really appreciate you, uh, Team Ghana, for your wonderful presentation, for your innovative product and the impact that it not only has on your local community, but the communities around. Um, have a wonderful rest of your day. We appreciate you. Great job again, and thank you. Plus de chaleur dans les véhicules. Avec Ocorin, vous serez soulagé. En plus d'un lettre bouton, vous serez au top. Avec Ecorin, plus de chaleur dans les bureaux. Ils ont coupé au boulot quoi Ouais Avec Ecovin vous serez soulagé En plus d'un lecteur Bluetooth Le chargeable à partir d'un panneau solaire Ah bon Avec Ecovin Plus de chaleur dans la maison Bonjour monsieur et mesdames les membres du jury Bonjour l'Afrique dans toute sa diversité Je me présente à Herman Chris Delange Je suis le directeur de la communication de l'entreprise GJ Technologies Je viens ici représenter notre directeur général Qui n'a pas pu être présent Pour cause d'un cas de force majeure je suis en compagnie de mes collègues, nous allons vous présenter notre mini-entreprise. GG Technologies est une mini-entreprise du programme Junior Hackman Côte d'Ivoire. L'objectif de notre mini-entreprise est de promouvoir l'autonomie énergétique qui respecte l'environnement et l'automatisation qui permet de simplifier le travail de l'homme. Nous avons constaté que pour protéger l'environnement, il faudra la participation de chacun de nous. C'est dans cette visée que GG Technologies a voulu démontrer par eco que nous pouvons lutter contre la pollution de l'environnement. Je passe la main au département de la production. J'ai maintenant signé Adwa Grasse Deborah. Je suis responsable du département de la production. Comme le directeur de la communication vient d'affirmer, mon équipe et moi avons, prévu, avons eu pour objectif de créer un ventilateur eco -win. Au départ, nous avons prévu de créer 10 ventilateurs. Cependant, vu la Vu la situation sanitaire, nous avons pu créer qu'un seul produ produit qui est un eco-win. Eco-win, eco qui signifie la nature et win qui signifie le vent. Nous avons pris en compte les, les informations que le département commercial nous a remontées afin d'améliorer nos produits et l'emmener au goût des clients. Je passe la parole au département commercial. Je me nomme Toile Jean de Dieu, directeur marketing de la mini-entreprise GJ Technologies. Comme vient de le dire le responsable de la production, j'ai pour fonction de faire promouvoir l'image de notre entreprise vis-à-vis -vis de la clientèle et différents partenaires. 
vu la pandémie qui a frappé le monde entier, mon équipe et moi n'avons pas eu à nous rapprocher de la clientèle. Néanmoins, nous avons eu à faire la publicité de notre produit via les réseaux sociaux afin de mieux promouvoir notre produit. Nous avons eu l'avis de certains clients par les questionnaires que nous avons élaborés afin de mieux améliorer notre produit. Notre objectif de vente était de vendre 10 projets, mais à cause de la COVID-19, nous n'avons pas pu atteindre cet objectif-là. Nous avons sollicité l'aide de nos collègues afin qu'ils puissent parler de notre produit à leur entourage. Notre produit a pour prix 50 000 francs et nous avons des clients qui sont prêts à acheter notre produit si nous sommes en mesure d'en fabriquer plusieurs. De ce fait, notre objectif a été atteint et nous pouvons élargir notre entreprise. Je vais laisser la parole au côté finance. Je me nomme Prawe Aïcha Albao. Je suis la représentatrice de la directrice financière absente pour cause d'un malaise. Prendre en charge les affaires financières de Jeudi Technologie m'a appris à mieux assumer les, les responsabilités chez Jeudi Technologie et dans la vie active. Au cours de nos différentes sections, nous avons en premier lieu, nos, nos pro, provisionnements de vente et du produit qui est de 10 ventilateurs. Ensuite, la mobilisation, le capital de GG Technologie qui s'élève à 35 000 francs CFA, dont 5 000 francs CFA d'investissement externe. Chaque mini-entrepreneur possède trois actions. Puis, nous avons déterminé le coût de revue de notre prototype qui est de 33 000 francs CFA pour, pour le prix de vente de 50 000 francs CFA. Ainsi, notre objectif était de produire 10 Eco Win pour un chiffre d'affaires de 500 000 francs CFA, les charges liées à la production de 330 000 francs CFA et un résultat provisionnel de 170 000 francs CFA. À la fin de notre exercice, les bénéfices distribués que nous nous sommes fixés étaient de 70 000 francs CFA, soit 2 000 francs CFA par action. À ce jour, nous n'avons produit qu'un eco window à cause de la crise sanitaire. Nous avons beaucoup d'espoir en l'avenir. Je laisse la parole au, à, au directeur de la communication. En définitive, nous visons dans le futur de travailler pour l'agrandissement de notre entreprise, de construire un siège et surtout de veiller à ce que notre milieu entreprise soit connu partout dans le monde entier. Nous nous remercions. Ok, wonderful. Thank you, Team Côte d'Ivoire. At this time, the translator will give us an overview of the presentation. So I think that um, they started by introducing that the CEO of the company couldn't be there because of force majeure. Um, they presented their company um, uh, from the standpoint of uh, the product that they are developing, um, which is uh, basically they immediately went into the business plan uh, saying that um, their cost of production, their procurement process, which brings them to about $100 of cost, and they're selling it for, I mean, uh, $92, I think, um, anyway. On a, and uh, they made basically a profit margin. They presented in CFA of, uh, of 70 a thousand CFA per share uh, profits. Um, they presented the uh, companies that they did a survey on the social media to find out about their, 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 their products and the marketability of their products. And they concentrated on presenting the process of production from the cutting, the structuring and the connection to it. Um, they immediately uh, introduced by saying that there was an energy uh, saving renewable energy solution and that this solution, uh, uh, they found more products and through the surveys that they integrated into it. Um, they said that they could only produce one prototype product because of the situation with COVID and the difficulties they had to, to do it and that they're looking at the future brightly. Um, synthetically, that is the full translation. Um, I mean, the, the, the synthetic translation of the, the, the their presentation. Uh, thank you so much, Liban. And what as it relates to the product and the service that they're providing, what did they call out? Um, they said that the product is a fan, sorry, a fan, um, but that it has other products that they integrated into it through the electronics. Um, I think, uh, but they didn't express it during the presentation, but when you look at the report, you mm -hmm. see that they have MP3 player, uh, battery chargers, and so on. 
um, like uh, for phone chargers and so on. So it's basically like a fan, but that has like uh, other, 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 other products. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, at this time, we'll go to our first judge for questions. So uh, first of all, congratulations on the product. It was an impressive uh, video commercial from my perspective, one of my favorites. And also the, the technical innovation is quite unique. And my question is, uh, is this fan powered uh, with a solar panel that is connected wirelessly? Okay. <laughs> Not on what ladder. Not on what ladder. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Not on what ladder. Not on what ladder. Uh, avec énergie solaire. Énergie solaire. Uh, je dis avec un fil à l'appareil. Okay, so they said that um, the, it's a solar energy or fueled, but that the solar panel is connected to the device. Okay. Cody mm -hmm. um, thank you for, 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 for the product. Interesting. Um, but my question um, would be the first one. How long is the energy stored um, in the solar? And uh, maybe a, a follow-up question on that, on that one. Um, do you have other source of, of, of energy on, on, on the product besides the solar? The ventilator can rest in March for two days so it will be recharged with energy solar. Yes, yes, if the sun is in March, we can consist of the current on our mind. He says that the, 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 the fan can work for two days without a recharge of solar energy. He says that if the solar doesn't work, it can work on the natural electricity. They have a, a plug for it. Mm -hmm. thank, thank, thank you, Camille. So um, uh, I, I can speak, I can ask my question in French, then just translate. So, uh, ma question, ma question uh, uh, je voudrais savoir, vous avez indiqué que chacun de vous possède trois actions. Alors, je voulais savoir, vous avez en tout combien d'actions euh, Combien d'actions Ça dit que votre entreprise est composée et constituée de combien, euh, combien de parts en termes d'actions euh, Ça, c'est ma, euh, ma première question. Et ma deuxième question, euh, vous avez évoqué le fait que vous n'avez pu fabriquer qu'un qu seul ventilateur à cause de la pandémie de covid Alors, à ma question euh, est de savoir, est-ce que aujourd'hui vous avez, vous mettez en place des, une stratégie afin de dépasser cet obstacle Parce que personne ne sait jusqu'à quand la pandémie sera euh, autour de nous. Est-ce que vous pensez déjà à des moyens, comment faire, malgré la pandémie, à, à augmenter la production Donc, permettez-moi d'abord de traduire pour les autres et puis je vais, euh, vous, vous, vous pouvez répondre. So, so, Kavim, I, I've just asked two questions to the, to the guys, to the CDI team. My first question was uh, just to find out the number of shares that they have part of the capital, because uh, during the presentation, they made mention that each and every one of them had three shares. So I just wanted to know what is the total shares uh, uh, they have part of the capital. That was my first question. And my second question is actually related to... Uh, uh, a fact, because on the, on the presentation, they actually indicated that based on the pandemic uh, COVID-19, they were uh, not able to produce uh, many uh, fans, but one. So I was just trying to find out from them if they have a strategy in place uh, so that, uh, I mean, they can, if they are planning to, to increase their productivity uh, beside the fact that we have the pandemic 19, uh, among us, which no one knows when this will be completely eradicated. So these are the two questions I've just asked the team to, to answer. Dans notre entreprise, chacun des actionnaires possède trois actions parce que la somme de nos actions peut être en cinq actions. Donc, cinq, pour, cinq des actions étaient un investissement esthétique. Cinq actions étaient un investissement esthétique. So 
So they said that 35 shares, 30 shares amongst 10 uh, of them, uh, because it's internal investments out of the out of the 10 of them, and the other five shares are external invest an external investor. So three three shares for the 10 founders and five shares for uh, for an external investor. They said once the, the 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 prototype for the future products, they already took all the dispositions to be able to ready to produce more. And once they raise more uh, investment, um, and they would be able to de deploy and produce uh, the product in quantity. Um, um, are, are there any expectations of uh, of support from from their government in their, in actually um, selling their product and uh, going big? in the concept that they've just designed. They said that um, they will, they have the plan of contact the government, they haven't done it yet, they only work with private sector first. But they have a plan at one point, not only in their country, but to go internationally um, and to other countries with this uh, uh, solution, uh, energy saving solution. Okay, wonderful. Do you have, can you ask the team if they have the prototype there that we can see it? Wonderful, and can they show us how it works now? A demonstration. Est-ce que vous pouvez l'allumer pour qu'on voie et puis et puis le rapprocher de la caméra pour qu'on voie bien? Okay. Il faut allumer. On veut voir ça tourner. Mais ça ne tourne pas. Are uh, they waiting for the solar for the so the, the battery? It was not with the battery. Oh, okay. Okay. Allume le ventilateur. Okay, if they're if they're if they're having some difficulty, that's fine. Yeah, they have some yeah. yeah, yeah. so that's fine. But actually seeing the product and being able to showcase that, I think it adds a lot of value to their presentation just for us to have a visual of what the product is. Thank you so much. So much, Team Cordova. Very innovative product. Thank you also for your presentation. Uh, good luck. And we are very excited that you were able to share with us today. Um, at this time, the judges will review and submit their scores. Thank you. Félicitations à vous, belle présentation. Ça fait du bien de voir que vous avez un produit. Il ne faut pas hésiter à montrer votre produit dans vos présentations et aussi quand vous présentez. En tout cas, merci, bravo pour ce produit innovatif. Bravo à vous, la Côte d'Ivoire. A very big congratulations to all of our teams on their pitches. Amazing, amazing stuff. And we'll take some reactions on how um, some of our students are feeling after those pitches. I'm sure you know they have the nerves and it's been so exciting and so hopeful um, to look at. We'll take their reactions and then after that, we will go for a short break while the judges finish entering their scores. I enjoyed it. As a, as a business owner, let me say, it helped me it opened my eyes to other points of thought because I didn't really think of transferring our product to other parts of the country as exactly a big problem, but it actually is, which gives me as the marketing and sales manager of this Make Investments JA company, 
more ideas on how to improve marketing and sales to be able to make the process of expanding our brand to other parts of the country as smooth as possible. So I personally enjoyed it. The JA Company program has been really developmental for me and my teammates as a whole because we've learned a lot about we've learned a lot about like delegation and be able and being able to be responsible with a pro, with a project for example because when we were given the reports and give and given like other responsibilities we all had to take our parts and go out to be able to complete a given task so i learned a lot from that <laughs> And in years which I actually didn't even was a very happy to get the experience of names concerning business, investing and other entrepreneurial activities. Program I learned not to give up because there were times where we literally wanted to just end it where we were and continue on the stuff because of schoolwork and other stuff were interfering with the whole process. So eventually we didn't give up and here we are. So, for the program and business part, I'm a type of person. I don't want to work under anyone. I feel like I want to create my own path and do the, what's best for me, not working under someone, depending on their purpose. So, I really think that business is more of my thing. Do you have stuff with that? Yes, I see them trying to make like all of us close to each other, learn different cultures, like how kind of um, during the day company of the year program, I learned entrepreneurial skills that I can put into practice because even I can go to university now and I can study whatever it is that I want to study, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I will put it to use. So I can always use these entrepreneurial skills in the future. It's a few things to add on our platform. Therefore, we have developed. We learned uh, networking with our colleagues. And we also learned on how to make our financial statements very perfect. The, the whole accounting process and basically we really learned more on financial leadership and we, we, we were able to get some experience on how to run business. Uh, we, were, we were happy uh, about the progression of the Q&A session. It was really wonderful. I, I think I, I, it's, it's, it's eye-opening. It's, it's a very wonderful experience talking to such people of, of high expertise who who are vast to doubt in, in the business in the business world. It's such a wonderful experience and we, we are happy for Gia Chibet to afford us such a, a, an experience. Uh, I'll start. Yes, I, I, I want to, to to pursue culinary arts. Reason being, oh, but what JA helped me in, in my career path is that he told me about entrepreneurship because what I want to do is that I want to be a future entrepreneur open my own fleet of, of, of businesses. And it taught me the entrepreneurship and leadership on how to lead a team to success. Uh, there, there, there's a lot I can mention. Uh, the, the sun can go down me mentioning what the program has helped me with. Starting from my left, obviously, they'll share their aspirations and how this program has helped them a step, go a step closer to pursuing their aspirations over to using them. Well, me, this program has actually taught me a lot of confidence. From like, from the beginning, I, I didn't have, I had confidence, but I didn't know how to express it. So with this program, from from the beginning to the end, uh, and, and still continuing, I've grown that confidence is key. And from my career path, as maybe in the future, I'll use that confidence to maybe, you know, bolden up my, my ideas and, you know, try to be upfront with what I think at the very moment. Yeah. Wow, yes, thank you so much for the opportunity. Uh, I am the finance manager for Anagot. Now, I, for one, want to pursue um, auditing. So, when, when, when I was a finance manager, one skill that I learned from junior achievement is the fact that one has to be disciplined whenever in the finances. 
when, whenever any preparation would come, maybe from the production, uh, maybe from the sales and marketing aspect, I would thoroughly analyze why the money is needed for, needed for and how it, 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 it will be rolled out. So it's one skill that I need. I think that I've learned that if you have a product, if you cannot market it and, and make it and make people get a part of it, then it's no, it's no, it's, it's no use because people won't want it if you don't, you don't tell them the benefits of your product. So that is what marketing the experience has actually taught me that if you don't market something, then it cannot work for you because the people cannot buy it if they don't know the benefits and why they have to buy it. Thank you. In just a few years, Africa will have the largest workforce in the world. How we prepare our youth today for the 21st century workforce will determine the future of an incredible supporter of JA's work in Africa. City has a program called Skills Enhancement, and that's of course very much aligned with everything that JA is about. Pathways to Progress is a commitment by City and globally. Pathways to Progress initiative supports programs that have skills and begin to uh, through the company program in its time. And we've also created over 800 different enterprises, of course, very useful for us as a nonprofit organization. It's important because it's a match where we are aligned in what- as City employees really do enjoy working alongside you. It's an important opportunity for young people to meet their respective economies. Youth economic empowerment in Africa is a critical and it's one of the most important calls. We have to change the narrative of education to respond to the that's available. The Of all the numbers that matter in business, here's the one that matters most. 7.7 .7 billion. Because that's how many people there are on this planet. We believe in an inclusive decent governments to solve human needs with human ideas. Every capability we build on, every investment we make, and every partnership we enter into. Developing new digital first payment experiences helping independent workers thrive in the gig economy, Safe. giving people all around the world, empowering every business. And we continue to redefine the look, the feel, and even the sound of a brand that touches them. Because we believe when you start with people, you can start something priceless. Tomorrow Foundation is a Swiss charity foundation aiming at making Africa a more economically developed, politically stable and culturally confident continent. The foundation gives access to technologies, training and assistance that could result in maximum social and economic impact in Africa. From water projects to skills development, technical assistance, health and agriculture. Our founder always been concerned with human development. She has a professional medical degree and a Master of Communications and Public Relations, an MBA of Global Management in the United States, and a Master of International Relations and Economy in Switzerland. We believe that learning-based development, empowerment, autonomy and collaboration have greater effectiveness than traditional assistance through funding or turnkey solutions. We consider youth education as a priority to create future leaders and a possibility of change. We developed the concept of soft barriers building, the idea that the multiplication of small-scale development projects, easy to start and addressing most urgent needs of specific communities, is the best way to fight against marginalization and radicalization of most vulnerable populations. The Foundation acts also at a larger scale, an upper level of the populations in need. 
promoting and assisting the development of more efficient and fairer economic policies and international cooperation. Tomorrow Foundation. Strive today. Strive for tomorrow. Today's youth are tomorrow's global leaders. Here at the PMI Educational Foundation, we envision a future focused on youth and the nonprofits that serve them as they work toward building life skills through project management. By focusing on partnerships with nonprofit organizations around the world, PMIEF prepares youth for education, career, and community engagement by enhancing the development of their critical life skills. Eu aprendi a ser liderado e também a ser líder. It will help me to speak loud and proud and loud and confident. And I think that really helped me and my peers. Nonprofits all over the world understand the value of teaching life competencies to youth. That's why PMIEF is focusing on youth targeted nonprofits around the globe. By embedding engaging project management concepts into these organizations, we help give the world's youth the competencies to be inspired, successful adults through valuable life skills. With the PMIEF grant, I'm certain and very excited that it will really help us to um, further this mission to improve um, the lives of children, to help children not just to survive in this world, but to thrive, um, not only in South Africa and the continent, but really to have an impact on the entire, entire world. When we teach the world's youth to apply project management skills in their lives, we unlock their potential and open doors to collaboration, critical thinking, creativity and communication. These skills will be critical for youth around the globe to succeed in an increasingly competitive world. You are a critical part of our strategy. Your skills, enthusiasm and financial support can help make our vision a reality. At PMIEF, we believe in project management for social good. Huh. Really amazing stuff today. They've all done so, so well. And we'll be letting you know who won in our awards ceremony on Saturday. But thank you so much for staying with us. We've done two days. It's been such a pleasure doing this with you. Um, but right now, what I really need you to do is to go into the comment section and like the team that you are rooting for. It's so important that we encourage um, you know, our young students whilst they're trying to be innovative and being creative, it's important that we encourage them um, so that they continue and they continue to shine, really. So we're going to go to our judges um, to give us their final remarks for the day. Really appreciate the level of engagement and inquiry that we this showed for our students so that they felt like, you know, they had a wonderful product. I, I love all the kudos. I love the recommendation. Mohammed, thank you so much. Ms. Zabi, thank you. Um, Yudeshni, uh, Anna Laura, Liban for being our translator. Um, for the other teammates that were here earlier, Rogers, thank you so much, you know, for your questions. We really value, you know, your engagement and your participation. Uh, thank you very much, guys. And uh, it was such an experience and being the host country for this year's competition. It has been an honor. Um, I have had a, a pleasant time of uh, amazing concepts. I'm hopeful that we are going to have a, a post-mortem of the whole um, event once everything has been consolidated. 
um, looking forward to to the winner of of, of this year's competition. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know, um, this is the third time I'm participating to a GA event. Uh, I used to be a, a member of jury for the national competition, and it's always been a wow experience. It's really, you know, you get to learn a lot of things from these young guys. So um, thank you for this opportunity uh, that GA is actually providing to these young guys uh, to showcase what we are capable of from doing. So um, looking forward next week to know who is the winner. But in any case, uh, it's just, it's, it's been a very, it's been a wonderful experience and thank you for making this possible. First of all, like the highlights for me are the organization. So it was extremely uh, well uh, structured preparation from uh, Asuko and you, Camille. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, second, I think the quality of, of the companies or the participants uh, for me was an extremely uh, good, good surprise or impressive. And uh, my wish is that uh, if not all of them, at least uh, uh, some of them would really advance these ideas to uh, a longer term uh, companies. And that's what uh, I, am, I am particularly interested in. I was, it was just amazing. The amount of talent uh, that's in Africa, the ideas were brilliant. Um, the care for the social impact, uh, I, I just, even when I read those reports, I, I thought it was really inspirational. Uh, so looking forward to see who's gonna win uh, and I agree with Mohammed. I definitely think that a lot of those ideas should progress. Um, those are really some brilliant ideas. Yeah, uh, thanks, Camila. I think it's uh, it's been a good experience. Uh, a lot of uh, brilliant ideas that were coming through from uh, the young guys. Uh, having read the report, I think for some of them, they may have undersold what they're doing in the reports because it wasn't so clear. But uh, going through the pitches and the question uh, Q&A sessions, I think that came out very clear. And uh, I think uh, all of them were very, very brilliant. I think they've... Uh, gone an extra mile ensuring that uh, they deliver quality product and uh, services in an innovative way. Uh, to be good to see who comes out as the eventual winners, but more important, I think as Muhammad says, it will be good to see many of these ideas being taken beyond this competition to see how they can actually implement them even after school. So it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity that JA is presenting to our young uh, folks in Africa. Thank you. This was such a great uh, opportunity for me, uh, actually, to participate uh, on the work that you guys are doing. Great initiative. Um, getting to learn about these young guys, the work they are doing, the innovation that they are putting in just to come up with, uh, with their products and the company. This is good. And coming from PMIEF, I think it also shows me the other side of the organization and its partners. I mean, what is it that we are doing? Because I used to hear about the partners with the NGOs, which are youth supporting and stuff like that. But I wasn't very clear in terms of when we're working with JA, what is it JA doing to the youth? So I think the picture is becoming very clear from the, uh, my perspective. So I look forward uh, to continue to work with you guys in the future. I know I'm going to be interacting with you in the future, but also the rest of the team. This was a great uh, moment and looking forward to the result and see who's going to win. Um, I, I, I was very impressed. I mean, I, I, I definitely uh, um, was excited by a lot of the ideas. Um, it, it's, it's definitely come a long way from when I was going through the program. Um, you know, the ideas are definitely more ambitious. Um, some of those that were uh, along the research line, I'm definitely hoping um, they can get more resources to really kind of build out those products. Um, um, particularly the guys with the, with the tower, with the garden tower. I thought that was an interesting product. So, uh, a great job, great job on uh, J is doing. Fantastic. With my past experience with junior achievement of more than 10 years, I see the evolution. I can tell that the new contenders are also learning from the old uh, 
uh, classes uh, from the mini enterprise program. Um, what I would say is uh, some constructive criticism, maybe to take into account that uh, Junior Achievement Africa, is that you can tell that from Anglophone Africa and Francophone Africa, there are some skill sets like PowerPoints or visual presentations that uh, they don't have. And I think uh, in a way to create equilibrium at the judging level, um, we should take that into account, but also on the long term, there should be some uh, complementary classes to those students that who are in their education system are not exposed to PowerPoint and, and so on, that there should be some kind of like tutorial or workshops to help them with their presentation uh, uh, quality. But nevertheless, um, amazing and the ideas are better and better. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that we planted seeds and these kids will be the entrepreneurial class that we will need on the continent on the long term. Whether it's these projects or next now, I think they know how to raise money and, and be in the conditions of stress when you pitch. I really appreciate that last thing that you said even more so, because that's next level, right? And next step. And so I've always, in, in these years that I've uh, supported the JA Africa judging, I have always been blown away by the tremendous talent across um, Africa. I've always been blown away by the level of preparation and effort with, from our member nations and how they have really, to their best of their ability, prepared our students. Um, I'm so grateful because the students themselves, they come from a variety of backgrounds. And I'm so thrilled that, you know, through perseverance, they're re we're resilient, right? A lot of them don't have a lot of uh, resources at home. And in, in spite of the pandemic, in spite of the challenges that they face, they have still come together and worked as a team and be able to showcase what a tremendous talent they are. And then third, I'm always blown away by the, the level of engagement um, and detail from the JA Africa staff. Um, just very excited about, you know, working with each and every one of you um, this year as well and looking forward to all the other, um, you know, partnerships moving forward. Um, but the takeaway that Taliban made, we will take that and table that and ensure that our name, uh, our na uh, member nations, especially for our Francophone countries, do you know provide some additional resources for our students so that they are you know be, you know showing up in the very best way. And I'm so thrilled for all our jury today um, and the level of caliber that everybody brings and engagement. Let's stay connected as well um, so that we don't lose we lose this momentum. We can't say thank you enough to all of our students, our judges, our sponsors, everyone who has joined us and supported us, been there for us, our teachers, our coaches, and to all of you, we're so grateful. Thank you so, so much. It's important though, at this point, that you go and vote for the Public Choice Award. The link is on the screen and in the chat box, and this is how you do it. Well, that's it for day two and for competition day. Tomorrow, we bring you the award ceremony and that's when you'll know who won the company of the year. I know you're on the edge of your seats, never act and waiting. Well, so are we. Well, we'll have to wait until tomorrow, 1 p.m. GMT. Don't be late, we'll be right on time. See you tomorrow.
Vargas.